Hey, yo, Flip. Yo. I'm going to put you on some fire, man. They got this new bed wash company. They got the lotion and the, the everything. What's their name? They got a recovery room. It's What's out- the name? Uh, Maestro's, Maestro's Classic. Hey, money's up front. I'm I'll, put you, you I'll put you on. I'll put you on. I'll put you on the you Maestro's, sure? man. You forgot where I brought you? You forgot where I brought you oh, up there? Oh, man. You forgot? You forgot about man. Ghost? All right, all right. Who is What's his name? Ghost. You know who he cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yo, make sure you get your Maestro's Classic Bed Care products yes. today at Target, CVS, mm-hmm. or go on maestrosclassic.com and use the promo code QUEENSFLIP to get 10% off. 10%? That's it? I thought it was, I thought it was free if you put your... Are you crazy? All right, I got it. Make sure you go there today. Log on. Maestro's with an S, dot com. I'm from Queens. Thank you for your pledge on Patreon. Yummy 76. G Money! Yo. What up, man? You good? What's up, man? I feel good, man. Oh, they got this boy. We got your little notes. <laughs> got your little notes. I got my notes too, man. You got the notes too? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a lot of researching around our next guest. Ain't no, ain't no heat cool on this one, though. Not, not yet. Yeah, it's you know a lot of notes, though. It's a lot of notes, yeah, yeah. Just... I've been doing a lot of researching on our next guest. I've been, uh, you know, watching footages and really critiquing because I don't want to try to ask the same questions that they ask in every interview. Right. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Because it would defeat the purpose. That's a fact. But how you doing? I'm good, man. Busy. I, you know, I'm starting to feel like a little old, man. I'm DJing a lot of parties. You know what I'm saying? My back be hurting. My feet be hurting. It's crazy, man. I was going on. I used to be fine before. Well. I don't know what's happening, man. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Man. Are, you, are you having sex? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. You, Why not? Don't, you don't answer any questions when I ask you. It's not... It's not about me. It's not about me either. Though. I'm a married man. You're not. You know, you're not, you're not. Are you married now? Huh? I wasn't invited to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but everything I'm is chilling. good. I'm chilling. Everything's good, man. I've been real busy. A lot of gigs, you know what I'm saying? A lot of uh, fans supporting the show. So shout out to all the fans once again. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that's watching the, the podcast, you know what I'm saying? We appreciate y'all. Um, you know. How's Freaky Friday? Freaky Friday, <laughs> Fishbowl Friday. Oh, how's that? How's that? How's that? It was the oh, first. Yeah. It was the first week last week. It was pretty good though. It was good vibe. Dope, dope, good dope, vibe. dope, dope. Yeah, dope. So it's cool. Every Friday, Tipsy Tomato. You know what I'm saying? Fishbowl Fridays. Nice vibe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe one day you come back through and come hang yeah, out I'm, with us. Yeah, I'm, I, came, I came there enough, nigga. I extended my I extended my my gratitude enough to that special <laughs> spot. That spot is very amazing. I had to give myself a break. All right, that's fine. I'll be there soon. Yeah, okay, sure. But, you know, I'm excited about the next guest. Yes. It's going to be a long night. But before we get to him, G-Money. Yo. Episode motherfucking 113. Nigga, Nigga we, we made, made it. it. Woo. We got a special guest. Yes. Special, special, special guest. You know, I used to always wonder as a kid. <laughs> wonder as a kid. I used to always wonder as a kid. <laughs> You know, before I did the research today, I used to wonder where everything went wrong. Hmm. What happened? Who is who? What is what? But before we get into that, my man Cuban Link in the building. What's up, man? Link. Yeah, 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 yeah. With a K at the end. Oh, Cuban Link. Yeah, with a K at the end. We gotta put that K there for the twenty. Isn't that like Zelda? Isn't Zelda has a character named Link? (laughs) Yeah, he is. I used to, that's my favorite game too. Really? Of wow! Course. Look at that. See? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, man? What's going Chilling on, my brother? Chilling, man. I'm happy. My to man, be round of one more time for Cuban Link in the building. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. I say I'm a fan of y'all show, man. Always been. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate you know that. Saying? How you think? So I'm, I'm proud of y'all. Keep doing it. This 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 uh this podium is big right here. So just keep doing your thing. Wow, that means a lot coming from you, man. Thank I, you. I, I thank like you. The, I like the matching greens. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Smooth guy. Well, you know, you know when you was when you was doing your, your crazy little show with the Chinese little dude and mm-hmm. and the all. I used to write when you you used to go live. But I don't think it was too much going on. Oh, word! I used to write to you. Yeah, I never saw that. I used to be like, yeah, boy, it's crazy. I didn't see that, <laughs> man. Up, but please, I mean, yeah, 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 you already know. You get lost in the comments. Too many. But welcome, welcome to flip but, the script. Um, hopefully, yeah, we you. make this. You know, we're gonna make. It's gonna be a long night. So prepare yourself. Uh, I'm here, man. I got nothing but time. And you know, before we start, you know, I always do my G Money introduction, my man G Money. It's a new introduction that I added to the. You like you like doing this. I I, I won't do it. Go ahead. Do, your <laughs> Yo. do your thing, G. So you know, let, let's get. Oh, I mean, you had a problem with what I was doing, bro. You just no. went straight to it and said, "Nah, flip. I don't have a problem with it, bro." I said you like doing this, like. You, what? You, I'm t- yeah, you know what I'm telling. I'm telling. I'm telling AB, bro. Who's AB? Auntie Bridge. I'm telling her. <laughs> 
<laughs> but she, she watches. She watches. She watches every show. Yeah, she loves all part of me. So, uh, who was Cuban Link? You know what I'm saying? Where, where you from? Where you grew up at? I mean, I, I'm a refugee, man. I came here when I was five years old. Really? 1980. If y'all seen Scarface, the beginning of Scarface, that mm. that footage was actually a real. That was real footage from from a certain situation that happened in Cuba between Cuba and America at that time, mm -hmm. 1980. So I came through that, you know, with my mother, my father, and my sister. So we really came from the boat. What was that, that like? Mm -hmm. That was crazy. I mean, what I remember was crazy. I mean, uh, walking up the plank, getting in the boat. Didn't know too much. I was five years old, so right, I remember right, right. I just know that my parents was going to be out, and you know what I'm saying. We just we couldn't pack too much, so we just came with whatever we could. It was basically so. What was that family? If you can, like break break it down, you tell us like what was the reason for that. You know what I'm saying? Like what, what was the whole? It was um, it was the oppression of Cuba. Like, like it was a lot of things going on bef between uh, Cuba and America at that time. Mm. So uh, President Jimmy Carter at the time gave uh, all the Cubans a, a way out. And it was like, yo, any Cuban that feels oppressed by the, by the government in your country, y'all welcome to come here. Hmm. So uh, basically he just gave every Cuban that wanted to come over here asylum. So what happened is that, of course, you know I mean, it, it, it got people that wanted change and freedom right. in, in Cuba at that time. So a lot of people just packed up and said, let's be out. You know what I'm saying? My, my my pops was one of them. My mom's was one of them. My pops was actually, um, he was incarcerated out there. So what happened was that Fidel, when that happened, Fidel got slick. So he opened up all the jails in Cuba. So mm. whatever regular families uh, wanted to leave and, you know, non-criminal uh, people wanted to leave, they, they, they was already leaving. But then when he opened up the jails, they, the criminals snuck in within those people. Wow. So he got rid of all of his resistance, at that, which is smart for evil, crazy dude, like he was, to do. But, uh, I mean, without that, I wouldn't probably be here. So, mm. you know what I'm saying? So that gave opportunity for, for, for those criminals that really wanted to, you know, uh, change their their lives and, and look for freedom out here in America. So, um, so like, how far in advance did, did you guys know about this, like, the... the, the um Opportunity. What was it like? I don't, last remember, thing, like I don't the, remember that much, but I know it had to be like. I know it was it was it was crazy. I mean, it was it was, you know, it's like chaos. I mean, you, you know, we out here and they, when they, when they if you in the hood, they, they got that, that that free cheese and <laughs> and, and, and the, in the church, you know, that line is crazy. Mm. So imagine that. You know what I'm saying? Imagine uh, people getting promised for 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 freedom. <laughs> Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So it was a lot of people. It was like I think if I mean the documents, the way they document was like hundred and twenty five thousand people that left. You know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of people. And then you got the, the criminal ones that wasn't even counted for that he right. opened the jails to, which probably was like ten thousand, fifteen thousand jail dudes. Hmm. And uh, yeah, but I remember that. I remember that. I remember the, the criminal dudes going crazy. because uh, we took a we took the trip from Mario the Mario boat lift and um actually from Cuba, Havana, and we landed in uh, Key West. Basically exactly what happened in Scarface. Wow, the, the whole intro. The yeah. whole thing, for real. And we was under the 95 bridge, for real, and in, in Miami, because that's where they had us, because they had to debrief us. So, you know, wow. you have to keep everywhere. You have to sign. Now, they, when, once they get here, like all of us, we got here, we have to be accounted for. And wow. So who's coming in the country? You have to give all your information up. Right. And somebody had to actually sponsor you. That that was like if you had somebody to sponsor you or somebody that you, you you knew that lived out here, it was easier. Like we had my aunt, so we only stood in the actual camp where the held is on the ninety five bridge um, for like probably a month inside those things. But it was it was a lot of crazy things going on. I mean shootings and my sister almost got hit with a bullet. Mm. I remember those things. I remember when I know I was, I was in a boat. The uh, uh, the boat was so overpacked. I mean it was a big boat. The name of the boat was the Orca. I remember that. Mm. And I remember the boat being so packed that uh, a fight broke out, and I was in my dad's my dad's shoulders, and uh, some people we just went overboard, and then I seen the water turn from 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 dark blue to like red, mm. from the sharks eating dick. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I I, I noticed that later in life that I knew that was sharks, but I seen that. You know wow. what I'm saying? And it's crazy. Some people might not, might not believe me, but that's what I saw. You know what I'm saying? So I remember it. I remember I remember it was tough times, you know? 
Um, <clears throat> you said Fidel Castro was evil. I ain't say all that. I'm saying uh, you said, the you said, mindset. So the mindset was so him himself is not evil, but the of mindset. a dictator of a dictator. I mean, I think uh, I think any leader would do that to get slick on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think the animosity he had towards America. I think in the back of his head he wanted to shit on him, so he did it, and also be a uh, more more he, he have more more leverage to rule the country. You got rid of all the resistance in your country, so now you got no criminals really. Hmm. So now you, you flush the toilets in America. <laughs> did you think he did a good job, like as far as him ruling over Cuba, or you preferred somebody else? I can't. I mean, uh, life is what it is. I mean, we had we had crazy lunatic leaders in, 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 in the history of just America mm -hmm. and in the world. So, um, I mean, if you stand it from far away and you see what Fidel has done for the, like, for the world, uh, you have to respect him. You have to salute him. If you lived in there, in his, if you lived under his regime, then you could say he's an evil motherfucker. Hmm. So, you on a boat, you here for a month, you come here, Miami. <laughs> you summed that up, you summed that up. Yeah, 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 you know, I'm yeah, in the boat, yeah. I came here in the boat. Yeah, you're, you're here for a month, no, you, and you went on well, to. I was in the, yeah, I was in my, in, in the, under the 95. 95, yeah. 95 north or south, it was in Miami. Yeah, yeah, so how long were you in Miami? So that's where you, did you grow up in Miami? No, 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 I stood there, um. <laughs> we got out, like I said, my aunt signed up for us, and, and then we started, we lived there with her for like uh, six months. Six months. But the streets was going wild. You got to understand Miami at that time. Like, Miami was already going crazy with the drugs over there. You know what I'm saying? So when the Cubans came, and you got all these criminals that came with it, hmm. <laughs> imagine the streets. You know what I'm saying? That's like an overtaker. It was like an overtake. You know what I'm saying? The takeover. Um, it was just crazy people, it was shootings, it was drug deals, it, it, the, the cocaine cowboy era. That was that. You know what I'm saying? You, you, see, you, you seen it. that? Yeah. Well, I witnessed this from, from a, from a five-year-old eyes. My, 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 my pops and my mom seen that, you know what I'm saying? But they, that's not the life they wanted. Mm. So what happened was like, it was too hot in, in, uh, in Miami, it was too crazy. So we decided to go to Puerto Rico. So in Puerto Rico, I lived there for four years. Puerto Rico was a little, you know, it was close to Cuba, you know what I'm saying? Spanish was the first language. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so similar. It's just real, that's that's the like Caribbean country that's that's close to Cuba, like the most, I feel. Between the, the landscape and the language, you know what I'm saying? Besides the flag, you know what I'm saying? That is backwards. But <laughs> it's a lot of similarities with that. So we lived there for four years. Then we came to the Bronx when I was nine. Hmm. Did you speak any English? No way. <laughs> Hell no. I had to go to bilingual class as soon as I got here. Wow. So I did that. Yeah, I was one of those dudes. I was one of those dudes that had to go to bilingual, you know what I'm saying, class and learn English and everything, you know what I'm saying? So how was that for you growing up, you know, in, in the Bronx now? Did you have friends that were, like, picking on you and things like that? Could you nah, kind of speak of? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Let me get that straight. Yeah, yeah. It was a little picking, but it wasn't picking like, you know what I'm saying, like an older, you know, when you get older, and, you know, you got the 13, 14, that's different. Mm -hmm. And I was, what, 9, 10? So it was just uh, normal little kids picking fights with you because right. they just wanted to pick fights with you. You see what I'm saying? So, um, I, I mean, I had to fight, bottom line. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. fought. I fought. I remember I remember when I got to junior high school, really. Like, I know I knew English already, but then, you know, you still a new, you still a new dude. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I went to Roberto Clemente, 166 in the Bronx, mm. 164th and uh, and Morris right there, and you know, uh, before that it was 35. So PS 35 was right next, CES 35, matter of fact, next door to it. Mm. But you know, I got, I gained a lot of friends, and but you know, you, you got the, you got the ones that's going to test you. You know what I'm saying? That's those are the ones, and then you beat them up. And, and you become good. your friends. Yeah, that's it. So it's just the same story. You know what I'm saying? Same. Story. Everybody get got to put in their work. You know what I'm saying? So how was the was crazy? Like you know, what I'm saying? I was a, a a terrorist or some shit. Like right, I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm over here beating people up. No, I, mean, I, got I, you. I, I only did it because I had to. You know what I'm saying? So how was the Bronx compared compared to you came from Florida? You came from 
you know, PR and, you know, Cuba. So how, how was the Bronx now at that oh, time? Oh, it was real different. I mean, it was it was just crazy. It was just like burnt down buildings at the time. Mm. So I came down when the, the Bronx was burning already. Like, you know what I'm saying? I remember me and my, my family, my mom's, my pops, and my sister used to go through through the burnt down buildings after they burnt mm. just to look for stuff that was left. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I seen the crack epidemic. That's, that's, that's the era too. So right, right. it was messed up. The Bronx was messed up, but it was... I don't know, something about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Something about New York that just gets you. Mm. Regardless how it looked, whatever, you just, the people, the culture, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just, you know, just, you have to embrace it. You know what I'm saying? So you in the Bronx now with, with your mom? Who else? Your, your dad was there yeah, also? Yeah, mom, Dukes, pop, Duke, yeah. So your pop my stayed son, around, he my remained. My, 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 my sister. Yeah, time. your 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 father stayed around. He remained like he didn't he didn't leave the family or nothing. Nah, nah, he didn't leave. I mean, later on, they, my mom and my pops got divorced, but he still was around. You know, old school pops, Caribbean pops. Yeah, Cuban. Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I go. So you're young in the Bronx. You're young, growing up. What do you get into? Do you get into selling drugs? Do you get nah, into nah. none of that? So you was a good kid. You was in I school. I mean, all that was happening. Around me, my pops was involved with stupid things too. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like pops was involved. What you talking about? I mean, I'm saying, like, you know, you know, you know how it go. I mean, we we, we from that, we from the bottom. So so, you know, from when you're from the bottom, and you try to come up, you do things that you know, uh, to make money, and you use the system in a certain way. You know, Mom Duke's welfare, Pop Duke's the hustler, still doing things good, but you got to make that extra money. Mm. So I grew up with the same thing. Everybody, I think, in New York. I mean, this is an untold story. Probably people don't say it, but you know what it is. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, not to cheat the system. Because when we get older, we understand what, what that means. But when we come here hungry, especially if you're an immigrant, you, mm -hmm. you look for opportunities any any way you could. And, you know, my pops, this is my pops. You know what I'm saying? He was, he, he was at everything. He never got incarcerated or anything. Yeah, of course he did. <laughs> Of course he did. <laughs> what, drugs? Selling drugs? No, 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 no. Other things. Yeah. Things you can't talk about. Just stick ups. Your father, wait, hold the fuck up. Oh, well, yeah. But, but you know, it, it's just. It, 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 he went from a man in Cuba. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you did say that he came from, so he was in prison. Exactly. Out there. Exactly. So he came here. So with he didn't this. start wilding when he got in America. Got it. Got it. He already got it. Pops <laughs> already robbing shit over there. He yeah. So he came. He, he did that out here. He was, he was robbing buffaloes and cows over there already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, at the end of the day, so did somebody tell on him out here? You think, or he got caught? Did somebody snitch on him? I'm not gonna tell you that story. That story, it's too crazy. And I let my pops passed away. God bless my pops. That's Bless my hero. Pops. That's my king. That's 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 the the, the, the reason I'm here. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just say. Let's just say he just did everything. And when he did come off, he always thought of his family. Respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, most of us, I think, that come from where we come from. Well, that's why I grew up anyway. I grew up in places like that. Mm -hmm. When I was in the Bronx, it's just like, that's the way it go. Mm. Okay. Um, now, no, no, give me a second. Yo, yo, y'all got to close that door. What's up with y'all, bro? Pardon me. Um, Pops wildin', but Pops looked out for his family all the time. Took care of his family. His family was very important to him. Yeah. Um, now. And he was a businessman. Let's get that straight. When we was in Puerto Rico. Come on, don't, don't, no, because remember, we skipped to Puerto Rico. When we went to Puerto Rico, like he built bodegas, and, and he, you know, my, him and my mom's had a restaurant, and we was mm. doing that. So it wasn't like, you know, he was just a straight criminal on some more. Like, you know, he had to do what he had to do, he did it. But so, he knows, like he knew his his carpentry, you know. But he just, you know how it go. We we get you look for the faster way. You get caught up in the faster way. So the other way was faster for him sometimes. What made him okay? So what made you guys come to New York? If if he was if the business was the business slowed down in Puerto Rico, it was yeah. He, he was just looking for oppor more opportunities, and you know what I'm saying. It was like we had little connections out here as far as he did. Mm -hmm. He knew somebody out here that. Obviously, told him, you know, this opportunity I had come out here. So we did that. We made that move. And um, that's what we, you know, I was a follower. I mean, you know what I'm saying? At and that's your king. Shout out to Pops. Rest in peace. Shout out to Pops. So yes, it was sir. you, mom, dad, and your sister. Yes, sir. 
Wait, just tell us about your sister. Where is she? She here. My sister's a low key, man. She loves that low key life. You know okay, you my mom's got... too. They all did. You know what I'm saying? They, they all love that that low. Even when I was Cuban Link and I, I'm, I got on the screen when I was like 22, 23. They didn't want no part to that. You know what I'm saying? My family mm. always been on the low, like. Hmm. They like to, they like to chill, regular. You know what I'm saying? That kept me grounded through all these years too. You now you coming from the Bronx now, like, what was the hip hop scene at, at that time? You know what I'm saying? Because that, that's around time when it kind of started to, to 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 really you know what I'm saying come out on the scene well it started like a 70 I came out yeah when they, the, the the cardboards was on the floor when mm. the, when the spike joints you know like the the the, 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 the motorcycle you know them spike bracelets okay, and gotcha, gotcha. all of that was just popping like you know what I'm saying so I, I was the little refugee wearing all that mm. <laughs> Michael Jackson jackets and all that you know I had the, I had the, I had the red one but you, but you from the mecca, of, you know, from the birthplace of hip hop is right. what they, you know, we argue we could say, you know, I, I, I think it's Queens because you know we're from Queens, but you know, the Bronx is where it all got started at Cool Hurt. So you was around for that time, you know what I'm saying? Talk about those, those times in the Bronx where you know the, the party scene or like the music, the vibe, you know, as far as that whole. I mean, it was beautiful. It was just you know being broke and, and you still having fun. You know what I'm saying? That's when everything. That's when life was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? When you're young and and. and, and no matter what situation, money is not a, an object. You know what I'm mm. saying? You can have fun going outside the building right there, which with, with, with these people that are in the middle of the street playing Skelzies. I mean, Skelly, you, know, oh yeah, you don't know what Skelzies is. That's stop or the tops that, you know, we, we, we you know. <laughs> Skelly. Skelly. Yeah, Skelzies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Skelly, Skelly, no. Skelly is the, is the shit you wear on your head. We no, it's a It's a Skelly. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> is that, is, hold on. That's a Scully. Is yeah, that called Scully? <laughs> I used to call it Scully. I don't know. And remember Slugs? What's Slugs? No, you don't know what Slugs the, is? The video no. game? Yeah, I'm at a, no, the, no, the, no. The boots? Slugs, man. The blue ball you throw in, in the curtain. Like, every, every every like square is your box. And you, you got to hit the ball on the ground and you cut it. And make right. killers in. See? Uh, see back. how his face comes? <laughs> I'll take you back to that. That's, so. That's called slugs back in the day. They called it another name in other in other boroughs. I don't know what it's called. The blue ball, not handball. But the same blue ball. I don't. I never seen that game before. You, you never played slugs. Nah. Oh yeah. Oh. Nah, and we never played skelzies neither. I played skelly though. You know, yeah, skelzies. I played the little with the tops. To the, yeah. Put a little, put a little putty inside the joint. Yeah. <laughs> you played Scully before? I played Scully like this, but I didn't play. I don't know what the other way. Talking about did they, they, they make it right in the middle of the street or on yeah, the yeah, sidewalk, yeah. my dude? Like yeah, they got number right? one, two, three, all yeah. of that. Yeah, and then you got to put it pop in the box, and you get four, four extra if you pop on the box. You know? mm. I'm gonna go and go. You ain't gonna go back with me. Nah, yeah, yeah, nah, I know. Nah. I ain't trying to go back with you. I'm just you gotta ask to your uncle that. about that. See, huh? I, know, I know your uncle. I nah, know we we know the game where he's trying to say your uncle knows it. Now we know the game too. I think we 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 call it Skelly. You saying Skells? Or something. I don't know. Either way, same game. Man. It's the same thing. Man. Same thing. Too old. <laughs> I might be too old. Skelzies, that's what I think. Skelzies, like yeah, yeah. So, Skellies, so, Skellies. I mean, so he I, says. I, I never called the Skellies. <laughs> I know it's Skelzies. That's what I call it. I like that. I like it. <laughs> he said, nah, that's, that's what you had. That's what you had. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? I don't understand the boy. Yeah, I don't understand the boy. Chill, 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 chill. I don't understand the boy. Chill, 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 chill. Chill, chill, chill. No, 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 that's true. No, 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 no. Yo, so. Getting old, man. So, so. so. <laughs> Skelzies. He said a scully. <laughs> they gonna go crazy in the comments. <laughs> He's trying to scully. correct us. Nah, <laughs> that goes on top of your head. <laughs> I don't know what's going that's on. That's <laughs> Nah, this is good. So hold up. This so all right. So you go. Did you did you graduate from school at all? Yeah, yeah, I graduated. What school? What's, what's I went to Chelsea, right up the block, right here. That's just crazy. When I came down, I was like, these niggas is not really like based out of like up the block. <laughs> I went to Chelsea Vocational, right up the block. And, mm. and you and you graduated. Yeah, yeah, I graduated. When did you meet Pun? I met Pun when I was sixteen. Tell mm. us that story. Sixteen, sixteen in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Pun was. Was was a dude that always used to rock in the ranch. The ranch was a one big building that, you know, later on in life, like I, I lived in 164th Sheridan, and after that, when I was 15, I, I moved to to Prospect Ave, 167. So the ranch was the building right next to us, and where I lived, that was like little brand new, you know, little houses, but it's like projects. And then you got forest projects across the street, so it's like little projects. 
between the big projects. The ranch was like next to us. So we used to always be there by the ranch. So Pun used to go to the ranch all the time. He knew, he knew, he, he had people there. And we used to play ball. So I seen him off and on playing ball and all of that. But the the first time when I really like, you know what I'm saying, like got tight with him was when my man Sace came to my window one day, threw a rock and was like, yo, come downstairs and yo. And I seen I seen this this little heavy set dude with a car hard suit, you know what I'm saying, like mm-hmm. bopping back and forth, watching back and forth, like, you know what I'm saying? Like something wrong. And I'm like, okay. I came downstairs and then, you know, he had a three a brand new three eighty. So we started checking that out. You know what I'm saying? We was always gun lovers. So uh, we went to his crib at that time. You know, he was uh, just uh, Moondog. His name was Moondog at the time. And then from that day, man, I mean, that from that day it was a rap. Like, you know what I'm saying? Our energies just was 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 in a, in a different level where it's like, yo, that's it's like my big bro right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. from that day, you know, he, he accepted. We shared energy. We, we played like, like, like kids, but, you know, teenager kids at the time. And, you know what I'm saying? He had the weed. Not the weed, the... I remember if you had, I don't know if you remember the the Nintendo where they had the pads and all that shit. They used to jog and shit on the pad. And mm-hmm. Anyway, that's back before like Word, they had that shit back then. I ain't Damn, know that. I'm an old yeah. ass dude. Y'all making me feel like nah, an old you, dude. you make you it, it. I think you making things up. No <laughs> man, remember I think that. you're trying to confuse us to about Scullies and like and <laughs> all that <laughs> Scalzies and <laughs> yeah, that all bugged me out. Remember the Nintendo. They came with the duck hunt. Remember the gun? Remember yes. yes. All right, pass the duck hunt. Got you. Then they came with a mat. Like I didn't you, know that. I didn't get the mat. They had the mat where you put it on the floor. It's like a twisted thing. So, okay, so. That's you had to do, like, stupid things. Like, oh, you know, Lord. the bootleg, the first, like, a bootleg, like, animation thing. Mm. So, he had the game, like, Olympic. I think it was the Olympics. Mm. He had all the games in the Olympics, and we used to play. Anyway, that's the only game we had there. We had the Fisher. <laughs> we had the little Fisher Price, little uh, pool table. Remember the little. Jo- oh. Okay. So we Fine. broke night do, doing things like that, like you know what I'm saying. And and he had his kid already. He had Amanda, you know. Y'all might know her now by Star, but it was Liza, Amanda, and Pun. How and, mm. and how old was Pun at that time? Uh, he was 18, going on 19. I was 16. Okay, so you met Pun. His name was what at the time? Moon, Moon Dog. Moon Dog. Moon Dog. Okay, and you don't know how he got that name at all. Nothing. You never. Heard just, nah, I was some that. Even yeah. from the ranch, like I was, they used to always call him Moondog. That's his name. And he was was because I, you know, you hear stories about him, um, you know, pertaining to his anger and who he is. But before, you know, we don't have to get into that yet. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ease into that. <laughs> you know what I mean, um, was he in the streets though? How come we do see pictures of him slim and Palm was the street. So he, he was sell getting crack, money, sell crack, all that. Like Palm was, uh, he was hooding. He was hurting it. And this was we before- was wild. Like me, I was on some more like regular school stuff around the block. This stupid stuff too. But we, you know, we never. I never like like dedicated my life to that. I mean, we did it, but you know what I'm saying. This is before you guys both were rapping, right? Before, right, right. Before the music. So he was just before known, the music. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was known did it out of necessity. Like he was left in the streets in a young age, so he had to. He had to come up with whatever he could come up with. You know what I'm saying? So his mm-hmm. life was different than mine. I had my moms and my pops, you know what I'm saying? He was like out here dolo, like sleeping in before me, you know what I'm saying? Like sleeping in, in benches and shit like that. And, you know, he had to go through the tough, tough shit. So mm-hmm. he had to survive. So he so he, he was a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? He was making his ends of meat, doing that. And um until, you know, he was eighteen when I met him, he just caught a lawsuit because he fell when he was a shorty. He fell down a building and he caught a lawsuit, whatever. So he had a little, a little cash, so not cash it to be like millionaire status, but he good. You know what I'm saying him and his family at that time was good. So that's when I met him. But what I'm saying is that you said that he was out here alone. He told you this out of his mouth. Where was his family? Yeah, his, well, well he, you know he was distant from his family. He went okay. through a lot. He went through a hard personal child, yeah, child, you? childhood. Before I got to him, you know what I'm saying I had to. You know what I'm saying? I, then later on, I found out like he went through, you know, some real shit. You know what I'm saying? From being abused, from stepfather, and not getting the love he wanted from his mother, and mm-hmm. being out there and had to you know, do what he had to do for himself and become a man early. And you know what I'm saying? Falling in love with with Liza early, and them starting a young, you know what I'm saying? Young young bond like that early, and, and living on their own. 
I'm saying, skipping like school and really becoming, a, you know, a, a married couple at, at, a, at an early age. So he had that before I even met him. So you know, what I'm saying? I met him already when he was, he was just he he was I with, as far as like his shelter and you know he, he was he was good. Mm. So it was hard for me to believe that when he started telling me those stories. I'm the you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you make your shit up. Give us a memory as a kid with you and Pun, you know, where you see him. Because, you know, like I said, as an adult, you know, we see the videos, we hear about how angry he gets, and I want to get into that later. But what do you, when was the first time you witnessed Pun get upset? Like, upset to that level. And don't paraphrase, because I watch your interviews, you like to paraphrase, long story short, and a, no, make stop. this. You do this to stop. everybody. Stop. Make this. You just do that to get the the, the No, 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 no. But the it's the truth, though. I watched it. I, I, I can no, tell you too. because we changed our ways. No, you know, you were talking to a girl with a mic. It was like a black and white footage. You had a red hat on. I watched you. That was way back. Exactly. I watched it. And I paraphrase what? You just paraphrase. I said you, everything there. You went the details, yeah, but you paraphrase about when you were talking about Joe and the situation. You didn't get in the details about. What went wrong? See, you're not gonna do that. Flip the script. Oh, you gotta ask me the right. Yeah, things. yeah, but you, you, you ain't gonna do that. Uh, so, the what's the question? Now, what do you? Don't rush me, bro. Rush me, Cuban. I respect you, man. You gonna just rush I me like that, me. man? I just wanna know it. That's what I, <laughs> I just okay. wanna know the question. No, so, where did you see Pun? First uh, time you seen Pun get aggressive, where you say, "Yo, he's crazy." <laughs> Damn, you need to ask me the right one too. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um... Yeah, it's it's a uh, it was a it was a hardcore memory for me when he did that. He he did that, and you know it was a it was it was already when I was just like you know what I'm saying like his man like that. So so we was living we was where he was living. Um, well, he was living. He was living in um, by Stevenson Commons across the street, Commonwealth Avenue. Yeah, and it was a situation that happened with him and his wife and. Me and Pun, like we always, like I said, we was been we always been active. So, from the from the boxing gym, like we you know we used to take up boxing together and all that, playing ball, and we was always like physical. But like Pun was, he was not regular in strength. You know what I'm saying? Like his strength was like Tyson's strength. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like like that, and he he loved Tyson. So imagine somebody really with power like that, really trying to be like the 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 strongest nigga in the world at the time. So anyway, we know his strength, right? So it's just that one day we was um, just chilling in the crib, and uh, something happened with with, with uh, his wife, and um, and something just made him like flip the script. You know what I'm saying? Like really flip the script. Where it's like the retardedness came out, like the side of my brother that I never seen. So it was like. That's when I mean, looking back at it now, at that time I was I was scared because I didn't see that uh, never from him, but I seen like like you know since it was a monster that in there, and that came from things I didn't know I didn't understand it. I mean, what I'm saying that's like before I met him. That's why I said that that he went through a lot of things, and that's something that was married like that. That was. You know that's in house. That's that's between husband and wife. But I was there mm. to witness that. But when I seen that, I was like, you know, I was just like, because things like that, like you know, domestic abuse. Mm. If you're not used to that, or you can never get used to that, to you know. But I'm just saying, that when you mm. first see that, you know, it could be an argument. Okay, that's an argument. You know what I'm saying. But when it's to a level where it's like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying. And, and then you love each other the next day. So you can't get involved with that because they love it. That's just, I'm just so much in the house that I got to see that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so it bothered me because I never seen that. So that's when I seen his anger go crazy. And usually the ones you love the most or loved you the most, you know, they bring out certain type of, you know, energy out of you. I just... I had an argument with him for like fucking two weeks after that. They started calling my house because I, I had to break out from that because it was just like crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I knew that. You know what I'm saying? So that's when when we get to the Liza story, to Pun's wife's story, regardless of what it is, that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? Regardless. 
but the only thing he left out here was them for me because I was that deep into that family. So as long as she's not lying, I can't say she lying. So when she says her story, I got to go. It's, I can't, you, she's not lying. But you said she's not lying, but then she stayed. So, so now put me there. Yeah. Put me there and, and picture me in that situation when that happened. Having Amanda in my arms, his firstborn, while they going crazy and I'm protecting the baby at 19 years old, sticking up for Liza. And then later on, she tells me, yo, don't ever get involved with me in my husband's business. Mm. Picture that. Was was Miss, and with all due respect to Miss Liza, was she out of, of course, pocket? That's my sister. But she, she knows I'm not lying, so she can't even say nothing. Was about she it. out of pocket for why Pun reacted, or you feel like as not, a man, as a man, your honest opinion, I'm actually just honestly, do you feel like Pun, in retrospect, do you feel like Pun shouldn't have acted like that? Because, you know, I watch interviews and I hear things of, you know, his children or his son or whomever right. speak about how his father treated his mother. But at the end of the, at the end of the day, first of all, domestic violence should not be tolerated. Right, but it happens. It happens. It happens. And she also stayed. She also stayed. So are we putting that in the Stockholm Syndrome category? What cat? Oh, you know, they were young and in love. Like, what category do we put that in? That's number Only one. Only she could answer that question. I appreciate that. And number two is that, was she also as aggressive or was it one-sided? Okay. It was not, she was not that, like, that aggressive. Yeah, it looked like you was, I could see it. It looked like it was playing, yeah, you, you really witnessed. Yeah, but, you know. But did she deserve, well, I don't actually. It's not deserve. about deserving, but. Nobody deserved things like in that. In my view, it's just like, you know, it just, it just got to the point of, I don't know, I don't know, I can't even say. Respect. I knew he loved her. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, the love mm -hmm. that he had for her was life or death. Respect. So he would have took a gun to his brains and blew his brains out for her. And she would have did the same. Mm -hmm. So it's that type of love, man. It's that crazy love. That's about it. That's about it. He told me every day. Hmm? He's talking about emotion. He's talking about emotion. Oh, I don't know. All right, what's going on over here? Cause you said not, when you when you come in the yeah, building, yeah. things stop. Things stop. You, know? yeah, you called he, it, he's man. Not, he's not really moving around. This is something about motion, you said? Yeah. Well, I don't know what the hell's going on with this guy. He's somebody here. Silly. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Silly, man. Get out of here, man, with that type of talk. All right. So, now, you know, you say he, he, he was calling the house for about two weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I got mad. Because he threw a knife at me. That's why. Mm. He threw a knife at me. For you trying to get involved and, and stop the... Right. He threw a knife at me. But not really to, I don't think, see, that's, he fucked my head up too with mm. all this shit. <laughs> like, I know he didn't try to do it because he didn't do it and hit the floor, but it's like, you know, like, he threw a knife at me, dog. You yep. know what I'm saying? He threw a knife at me. What's wrong with you? You knew him before he was big, big, or like, you know? Yeah, I, I knew him when, well, when I really, really knew him, he was around 270, 300. Mm. Yeah, but I used to play ball with him when he was like 180. But I didn't know him like I, I knew him when he was, you know, a little more weight. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh. But like I said, that's my brother, right? Regardless. But at the end of the day, it's like what him and his wife had was what they had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just deep, man. It's just deep. It's I deep. See. It's I, deep. I, I, I see, I and see me it. being who yeah. I am, me being who I am, and being part of that family. Mm -hmm. That's not. This is not music business to me. Right. When you talk about them, that's like my family. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody I got close to after I came in a boat from Cuba, things like that. You know, so, so I'm like a. I'm from coming from that angle. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I ain't treating him like, oh, that's my neighbor. Nah, that's my brother. You right. know what I'm saying and. And what we shared, regardless of what we did later in life, as far as music, that's what it was. But his family is my always considered my family, mm. and she will always be considered my sister to me. From that that love, you know what I'm saying, because he was my brother. 
Now she could get mad at me after a course a thousand times because I might have took him away from her. And you know how it goes when you got a wife and you know you got a friend that you always chill with. The girl or, or, or the or the wife is gonna get mad at you because why are you always taking my husband away? So it's like we gotta. Why are you chilling with this nigga more than me? Hmm. So that that happens too. You know what I'm saying? So. So were you there? <clears throat> were you there when he met Fat Joe and all that? Did you know? Yeah, when I introduced him. I, I was there in the corner. One sixty six and ten is a, uh, a a bodega grocery store right there in the corner. We used to always chill at. You know, but before that, we, we was already rocking with TS, like the street TS, because we from the same neighborhood. So we used to rock. We was making noise from from the ground up, you know what I'm saying, from the corners. You know what I'm saying? You're spitting, and, and people was, like, just talking about us. So, um... You guys had a group before? Yeah, Full Terrace Eclipse. Squad, though. Full Eclipse was the name of the group. Yeah. And then, uh, rest in peace, Uncle B, actually from down here. Mm. From, um, from Cherry Street, man, in uh, Alphabet City, man, South Street. Um, he backed us up, you know what I'm saying? Good brother, he passed away, man. He's like an uncle to us. He's the first one who really invested in us as far as like believed in our talent and got us like little hoodies and, and vests and stuff and put, a, put us uh, in, his, in the park and, and we performed. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we started making noise at that time and then that's when, uh, remember we was dealing with the street TS. So I, it was, a, you know, it was just a matter of time before pun, I mean before, Joe would hear about us. So Joe used to come to the hood to play baseball, softball, and stuff like that. And we, I knew him like that, like me, Sace, you know what I'm saying? We knew him from that. But we never talked business of, of music and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So one day we was just chilling in a bodega, me and Pun, out of nowhere. And we used to chill there, always crew deep. But this time it was just me and Pun just chilling. And we was in front of the bodega. And Joe pulls up. He was dolo. And he went to get something in the store. You know what I'm saying? He came to the front, said, what's up, whatever. Because we knew from, I knew him from softball. So he said, what's up? He went inside. And then Pun tell me, hey, yo, when he come out, I'm going to spit a rhyme, all right? Tell him, tell him I want to spit a rhyme. And I was like, all right, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him. So I go in there. I go to the back, Joe getting a, a Diet Pepsi out there, a Diet Coke. And I was just like, I was just like, yo, it's cool, my man, spit a rhyme when you come out. You got some time? And he was like, yeah, 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 let me just get this. So, uh, whatever, he just came out. When he came out, you know, it was just, I, I put that. Yo, hold on, keep it, hold on. There's a lot of shit going on over I told you, man, it's going <laughs> to happen, man. <laughs> told you, man. Demons are everywhere. They don't want the story to come out, man. Is it good, though? The motion is good? <laughs> you know you don't get scared. You Haitian. You got the Haitian blood. You don't, you don't get scared about sure things like that. Go good, man. It's the first time. I don't know what the fuck going on. Well, All right. Flores Palo Muerto. So now, you know, due to some technical difficulties. Spiritual. Let's get back. So it's not spiritual, man. It's spiritual, man. You believe in your soul. You, you got a soul. You, you believe we're not in gonna, it. We're not, it's not energy. We're not going to mess with the flow of the conversation. We're never messing up the flow. You got you to gotta welcome that. You got to welcome it. Got to accept it. You came it. in here That's earlier. not messing nothing up, man. You came in here earlier saying that when I come in the building. Hello. Cameras messed up and everything messed up, right? You said that earlier, right? No, I said when I'm around, a lot of electronic dumb shit happens. <laughs> so. Yes, sir. Do you remember when Big Pun met Fat Joe? I introduced him. And you introduced him? 166 you and 10. There's a bodega right there. I knew Joe already from... You know what I'm saying? Playing softball, he comes to the hood, he plays softball, <laughs> all of that. You know what I'm saying? Being around, being a rapper. Of course, we you know Pun knew him, and Pun always, we always had love because, you know, he's just like the local celebrity. Like, you know what I'm saying? He can't, he, he's from the hood, so we salute. So what him, was Fat Joe at his career though? It was, he was like, in Relativity already. He came out with the, the Represent album, he, and, and he was already messing with like DITC. They're all from my hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we always salute DITC, you know, Law Finesse. You know, the, all of that, AG and showbiz. Mm. So they all from there. Okay. So, you know, Joe was like the, the Spanish edition that, that was respected and, and also was doing his thing in hip hop. And you know what I'm saying? And uh, we always had love for that, you know what I'm saying? So um, one day we was just chilling there. Like I said, we used to rock with the TS from the street. So they all knew about us and they all told Joe about us. But we just never had like a, 
like a straight face to face and we just said let's let, let us rhyme for you yet mm. so me and pun was chilling in front of the store like i said uh joe went in there he said what's up when he went in he went to get a soda or whatever pun on a low after he went in told me yo tell that nigga i want to spit for him when he come out so i go in there i told joe yo my, my, my bro want to spit for you you know it's cool he got time he said yeah yeah let me just buy this whatever joe came out i say yo this is my brother big you know big dog Big Moon Dog, this is Joe, whatever, you know what I'm saying, whatever, and, and, and Pun just blew his mind away, you know what I'm saying? Blew his mind away, you know, he he spit the, the joint he did uh, in, in actually in Jealous One's Envy in his album, and uh, South Bronx is the wrong place to visit, that song. You know, so where he blew the, he, he snatched the moon out the sky and blew the sun away, you know what I'm saying, that, that was a, a line in his rhyme. Hmm. So, uh, you know, he made Joe a believer there. You know, since that day. So Terror Squad T S was a crew in the street, you said. Yeah, yeah, it was a street street. Was Joe always a part of it? He was part of them. He was from the hood, he was from yeah. There's a lot of them though. And there was no leader. It was just, you know what I'm saying, just real dudes from the street. Okay, so there was no leader back then. Not real leader. You know what I'm saying? Joe when he when he when he he became like as far as like a rapper, he he took that name on and to represent his crew. That was his crew. Mm -hmm. It's like us, we was full of clips. Joe was Terror Squad, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now, he does that. Fat Joe likes big puns. Rhymes. Rhymes. Where it goes from there? What do you remember happening next? Well, you know, it goes beyond that because now, now remember, we was messing with, I told you, Uncle B was mm -hmm. the first one who who really like engaged in us to believe in our in our talent and, and he was kinda investing and we was rocking with Uncle B forever. So, you know, Joe and Uncle B, I guess that's the business level we wasn't up on at that time, but then they had a situation where they had to speak, you know what I'm saying? And 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 according to to, to Uncle B to me, you know what I'm saying? He he blessed Joe with like, yo, take him to where you need to take him. Cause remember Uncle B was you know what I'm saying, street runners. You know what I'm saying? We we dealing with like street runners, not just regular like it's like big dogs, you know what I'm saying? So uh, on that level, um, they had to speak and, and they had a good relationship as far as everybody was cool at the time. And I think, uh, you know, Uncle B gave him the blessings. Yo, if you think you can make him, take him to the top, take him. So uh, I think that was the the nail on the coffin when uh, he said that and then Pun and Joe, they they, they got busy, you know what I'm saying? But, but the only restriction was that, uh, he didn't want a group, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to rock with uh, with Pun by himself. So me, Triple Sace, the sick one, at the end of the day, we had to play the sideline. So some more like, okay, and give Pun our blessings because he, he also came to us and said, yo, listen, he wants to rock with me by myself first. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So, you know, I mean, I was good, all good with it. You know, some some people had a problem with it, you know what I'm saying? But I was, I was like, yeah, nigga, crazy. <laughs> Do that shit, you crazy? You know what I'm saying? So, that's just how it was with me, you know. And my brother never forgot about me. Hold on, so real quick before you continue on with that side of the story, when did you guys start rapping though? We, we didn't get to that part. Like, when, when did you and Pun start? Well, I start. Yeah, we started different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I told you, uh, uh, when I was in junior high school, actually, that's when like Run DMC and mm -hmm. and you know, uh, Mr. Magic on the radio. That's when hip hop really captivated me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Furious Five, Melly Mel and them. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying uh, Big L. Uh, I mean, not big L, L Cool J, um, Curtis Blow, you know, all of that, just mm -hmm. like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? That that just captivated me, like from 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 the artist, the artistic part of hip hop, as far as the culture, the fashion, the music, you know, what I'm saying the DJ, the MC, all of that fascinated me. So I really got like that. Just that appreciation came out of me used to be writing like their lyrics on on a paper and reciting it in front of the class. Mm. You know what I'm saying so. I started my rap career like just as a hobby like that. The love for it made me uh, imitate it. Mm. And then uh, I started like venturing into my own, like writing my own stuff, but on the hush, you know what I'm saying? And, right, and right. Pun was already, he, he used to love R&B. So mm. he was like a soul, soul singer. He wanted, you know, he used to play around with it. But um, yeah, he loved soul, soul music. And, and Sace was the actual, the, the motivator. He was the one that was like more, um, into into the actual business and trying to really become a real like hip hop dude. 
Right, right. Like he was really in the group already then. They was like my favorites, our favorites, Young and, and Ruthless, they was called. It was uh, Triple Six. Well, at the time, his name was Joker, Joker Jan. Mm. And it was uh, JQ and uh, my man TUD. And there was a group together. It was uh, Young and Ruthless. And it was like the local group, but there was fire. It's fire. Spit fire. Yo, so when did when did you and Pun know that? Well, when did you know that that you were like really good at rapping and, and good at the music? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, when did it click for you? Um, I mean, the reinsurance of, of Pun. You know what I'm saying? Pun telling me I'm dope. Um. And people in the hood just telling me, yo, you dope. But never, I never took it in like, you know, it's going to be my career. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? It was just like, all right. You know what I'm saying? But me, I always been a hard critic, like, critic on myself. So it's like I always, I go deeper into it. You know what I'm saying? But um, it was a process. It was a process. You know what I'm saying? Until I see myself, like, after Pun made it or started the process of making it, like, as far as going to shows, as far as, like, um, sitting down and writing a rhyme and, and structuring a song you know when i was helping them with it it was like okay it was like boot camp you know what i'm saying because mm. you still you still had to become an artist a full artist it wasn't about about just spitting rhymes in the hood no more now you got to impress a crowd now you got to know how to grab the mic now you got to know how to put your voice together right. so it's a process it became like <clears throat> you had to i had to learn that but at what moment I, did you did, off did, the books i think off the books with the um off the books was was it was a be not track it. Right, because that's when it became real. It's like a song I wasn't even supposed to be on. Mm. And Pun dragged me there, and then they kept it. You know what I'm saying? Like, another another person, like, recognized and said it was dope. Mm. So they they, 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 they they put their money, and, 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 and the label was behind them. And I was getting played on the radio, and um, they made a video about it. And I was my brother. So that, that and then after, you know, we started performing that, that song, it became serious. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Um, you, um, so you gave him your blessings. You gave yeah, of him your blessings. Like, yo, go ahead. At the time, I didn't even many, need it. I just gave it to him. Yeah, so, yeah out of respect. Know. Yeah, yeah, because he came to you guys. At the time, um, who was in the crew at the time? You you stated it, but Remy wasn't around because I heard Remy was pun people's, you know. Mm. No, no, Remy came later. Later. All right, cool. After Capital Punishment. Okay, so he's rocking with Joe, and you rocking with Joe as well at the time. Right? Yeah, rocking well, together. Well, Pun and Joe had business together. You know, besides us rocking together, it was already in written. It was already written that they had a contract together. I'm saying, which was fifty fifty, if I'm not mistaken. Are you assuming, or you know? I'm pretty sure. I'm like a hundred percent sure, but I don't want to say it because. <laughs> I, I didn't see it, but you know, it was what it was. Fifty fifty, they was going fifty okay. fifty on everything. I mean, if you look, if we didn't know, remember, we coming in, we don't know the, the music industry like that. We don't know the contracts, right. and to us, fifty fifty, shit, you gonna put me on, and I, I do my talent, and we go fifty fifty. That's 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 a gentleman's yeah, yeah. deal to me from the hood we come from. Mm -hmm. So I think, and that's fair. So I, we never had a problem with that. Pun didn't have a problem with it. It's just later on when we notice, yo, the biggest manager gets 20%. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, now we starting to learn it, so but we learned that later. So, wait, hold on. Oh, whoa. Slow down. So you trying to imply that, you're trying to imply without implying it. There you that, go. Yeah, I have to say <laughs> that basically that. I'm implying, I ain't implying anything. I'm telling you the truth now. You, you decipher it. You guys got, you know, Pun might have got jerked. We don't see it like that. Okay, so you don't see we, it like that. Because we don't. We didn't see it. Like I said, it, no. So you accepted yeah. the the, yeah. the rules and the 50-50. You accepted it because from the hood, your peoples, you show yeah. them love, you show, you know, new things. Okay. Yeah. So we you accepted, accepted it. it man. Mm -hmm. Gentleman's deal. I do 50%, you do 50%. Let's do it. You're taking a chance on me. Let's go. Let's rock. Let's, let's did, shock the world. And Fat Joe did take a chance on Pun. Well, that's why he got fifty percent. Yeah. It ain't, yeah. So it's it's not it's not take a chance. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's you're getting paid for the chance you take, and you're getting paid more than the average guy. So it's a great chance to take. 
Okay. And your confidence in his skill. I'm saying. So what was but the, he but he he believed. Don't don't get that twisted. He believed. Oh, respect. And he worked hard for it too. Joe was put like promotion and everything and mm -hmm. and, and got in pun through the business. Mm -hmm. He was there. He was there. He worked because, hard. Yes. Now was the motiv his motivation that he got 50% and he's going to be like make a lot of money on this? Could have been. Great. Whatever motivated him. I'm saying. Yo, Q, I'm just saying his business and his love. I'm saying I'm speaking from like my brother's point of view. I would never take advantage of my brother, but that's me. I'm his family. But when you're doing it from a business point of view, if the incentive is more for you to get more paper and and it's like, okay, I got a great situation here where I'm gonna make a lot of money if it goes right, it will give you motivation to take it to the top. But that's a backhanded comment. Never. It is because no, you're not. saying that you just gave Fat Joe credit, saying that he promoted. Yes. He did a lot, but now you're saying that his intentions of promoting may have been because... Yes, because he says, brother. Understand that? Now, when you say brother, that adds, like when you say that's my twin, that's not the same meaning I have for twin when I talk about pun. So get it right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There was incentive there in business to make anybody go 100% towards that business because it was a sh it was at least a 90% short shot that that's going to pay off. Now, we started together, right? We started together, and you're my brother. We started from nothing, you know, and I know the business game. You think I'm going to charge you 50% knowing that I know that people don't do that when I know that the cap is 20? We do that. When I do that to you knowing that, I'm saying, if but you're my brother... But then that means that I have to stop you again because you said earlier when G-Money was speaking to you that Joe was already established already. No, no, no. He was, he was what do you mean established? But was, wasn't he? Well, you do your, do, you do your research. Was he established when he did Flow Joe? I don't know. I don't you know. have to know. You ask me these questions. You are the interviewer. You have to know was Joe at his peak or his prime or was he making was money? At his peak or his prime. Was he making money? To the was he in a in in, in 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 a stable situation where he's good? I'm asking you. When he came out with don't ask me any questions. Okay, good. I'm asking you questions. Well, I'm telling you, he wasn't. He needed okay. to. He needed something as far as like. Well, he was still growing. I'm saying that okay. was Joe's first album. Yes, he's a great. He's a good businessman. He got a great ear. Yes. I'm giving you all of that. But he wasn't, he was just starting. Like he was a student of the game. Joe was a student of the game. Okay. He knew he needed help when it came to lyrics. He did. And no, he sold his, you know, his first album didn't go as much. He probably sold like 50,000, a little less, I think like 30. Okay. And relativity, that wasn't good enough at that time. This niggas is selling 100,000 their first week out. So he wasn't where he was at. You know what I'm saying? He needed help when it came to like, his his, his 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 marketing his his you know he wasn't he knew he wasn't pun is what I'm saying. I have to I have to get at you real quick. And I, and but he had his own things you know going. Let, for let, him. Let me, I'm not let me, that. Allow me to respond. First of all, this is a Cuban Link interview, so I'm not going to do Fat Joe's research about his first album or when he came out. That's number one. Yeah, number two, no, no. <laughs> I'm, we're talking about because you are Pun's friend. That's what all the interviews that I listened about you. That's what you stated. That's right. my man. And stuff like that. Right, and for, for I'm music. just going by what you and G Money was talking about. Because G Money, you know, he's a DJ. He knows more. Right. In my opinion, or by ob observing, I could have looked it up just now. I was assuming that, you know, Joe had his foot in the door, and you know he was putting pun on. But you're saying he, that, you know, that's yeah. that's so that's why I said it was a. But back he's an artist too. Remember that. Artist, yeah, yeah. Now, if you got your foot in the door and you play in another position and you help me, it's different. Respect. You're also an artist. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's That's like, why I said it was a backhand comment, in my opinion, because it was like... Eh, I'm not a backhand dude, though. I tell it how it is. <laughs> but allow me so you can see my vision, even though you don't look at things from a backhand perspective. Right, right. You stated that Fat Joe did promote and stuff like that, but then you said the incentive might have been that he was getting 50% and it was a money thing. You know, I want you he, to know the, the, the logistics of it, the behind the, the scenes. Because you hear him, he did a song, that's what I'm saying, like all these years, what do you hear Joe say about pun? That's his brother, that's his twin, he love him. His brother, loves, loves, big word. Mm -hmm. Brother's a big word, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So when you say that, mm -hmm. say the story for real though. What made you love him? 
Did you love him because you loved his kids and his family, or you loved him because you loved the fact that you knew you were gonna make a lot of money with this guy? And he's your business guy. He's a great, he's a greater business asset than he's more of your friend. That's what I'm telling you. And what do you base that off of? The experience, first-hand experience. But you just said your man came to you and told you that you don't know what him and Joe talked about or how they connected privately. You don't know that. Who? You. You don't. Yeah. I was there for everything. No, you can't. Oh, whoa, well, hold up. Come on, stop it. I, I respect you. you, you I get, was there for I like every... you a lot, bro, but I'm not going to like you to do that. I like, yo, you my man. Yo, flip. But I can't like you. You bugging. But you're trying to say that I'm not saying that Joe didn't have no love for him. I'm not saying that. But that's, the implication goes that way, oh, Cuban. I'm telling you that. In, no, I'm telling you the beginning. Remember, you, we just started this conversation. Okay. That's so true. I'm trying to tell you incentives of why place. people might place. go out their way okay. to, to do more things. I just saw. Besides uh, love, I'm saying. Besides love. Respect. Respect. It's a great business deal, Joe had. It, it is. Now, after 20 years later, looking back. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you you don't love him now. I'm not telling you that. I'm not like that. Okay. Now, just giving you the reality of it. Let me tell you where my biasness came from. So I watched while doing research, uh, right. cause he's talking about, you know, when he, he did state on Drink Champs that you, you now go to church and he hopes you tell the truth. He stated things, but right. one thing that he said that clicked with me when he said that. Oh, something clicked with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please express. Yeah, he said that I'm not <laughs> out here making big pun t-shirts. I'm not out here making big puns albums or greatest hits. Mm -hmm. You know, I want his legacy to be what it was. And that stuck out with me because a lot of people do do these things. And, you know, by him saying that, to me, how he implied it, yeah, yeah, you could get your phone to. No, I'm just to, looking to, at myself. To, to look at yourself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, your scars are nice. You're Smile. handsome, man. You're a strong, man. You know, pause. Yeah. No, <laughs> by him saying that to me, to me, in my opinion, was like, hmm, you know, Honorable. yeah. Yeah, honorable to me. Yeah, I thought I thought that was dope. I what thought else? that. Well, describe another one. I thought no, I thought that was dope. dope. But then I also thought like, wait, but you know, how would his family make money off oh, of? Okay. Well, you know, there you go. Come on, hold on. I didn't interrupt you. Come on, you got no, no, phone. no. But I'm just You're saying. distracting me. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just. I'm not doing nothing. I'm, so, but come on. I looked you in your eye, my friend. You gotta let at least I'll let you finish. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, but. Then I thought, at first, I thought, it's double-edged for me. And I'm going to be honest with you. You said click with you. Yeah, it did click with me because nobody, everybody, when somebody passes away, they make greatest hit albums. They make new albums. They make remixes. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Pun has a lot of rhymes or Fat Joe might have hard drives with a lot of Pun's rhymes that he's able to revamp things or make remixes of different songs. So when he stated that to me, it was like, oh, okay, I can see. Yeah, I don't see any... Yeah, baby shirts or big pun shirts or anything like that that you're trying to make, you know, to me at first. But that's a good thing. In yeah. Your mind, in your mind. In my mind. Why is that a good thing? Because he it, left. That means nobody, like, nobody's using him after he died. Yes, he let his legacy be what it is. But okay. then. Okay. But then. So, so his family, after he dies, go to a shelter. Lives in a shelter. They go through poverty after this, after, after the pun Took them to the next level and took other families and their 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 friends and their kids. Mm -hmm. Accelerated them in the life, the game of life. Mm -hmm. Put them in different brackets. Mm -hmm. But the only ones that can't ever take advantage of them is the family that of the king that made that happen. Now I'm going to continue what I was saying. Then on my way here driving, thinking about it after watching it, I was staying, well, then how is his family getting residuals or money? You know, how is his family eating from that? That's what I thought. You know what I mean? So then, like I said, it's a double-edged sword for me. Initially, it's like, oh, yeah, because I, yeah, I did hear a lot of different well, you, things. You, but you've seen it play out is what I'm saying. Like, it, I'm not saying anything like ifs. Like, okay. you've seen life play out. This is not a, uh, something that happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is 20 years in the making, and you've seen it. If you do your research and you've seen the life of other people that we're talking about, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You've seen it, how it played out. So that's what I'm saying. What do you think? What do you? It's know? great to be on top of the mountain after you cash in, and go. Oh, let my brother rest in peace. He's good. Why? Why would you say that? When his kids still need to go to college. Mm -hmm. When they, the wife, she was regardless the crazy relationship, but she earned that. Money that's earned. That's their money. That's their father. Their husband. 
That's true. You're 100% correct. So what not, what's not realer than that? Now, you know, you might get caught because it's entertainment or whatever. You might not hear this whole story fully the way it should be explained. But that's just how it played out, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to say that. When you have control of the masters, you have control of the image, you have mm -hmm. control of shit because he signed to you. And you're the beneficiary of that. You're the holder of that. Without your word, that can't come out. So it's easy for you to say, oh, no, now, I don't use other people. Who were you saying that to? Like, the only one who got used like that was what? Who? Big? Mm -hmm. Did Puffy use Big like that? To my knowledge, Big's mom's is eating. To my knowledge, so to, you know what I'm saying, to what was going on, like, it, it, it's an estate. It be, you're so big, you became an estate. Pac is an estate. Mm -hmm. Pun is an estate. Mm -hmm. he, he's not a regular dude when he came through. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was a whole different levels of, of, of things. You know what I'm saying? So he, he meant a lot for a lot of people. He sold three million albums. He got a lot of people that he was in business with, and he was just an artist, and he made him a lot of money. You know what I'm saying, and then when it's time for, even though how fast he spent money or how crazy he was with money, it doesn't matter, my brother. And if you're my brother, there you go. If you're my brother, if you're my twin, you should never ever in your life let his family go through what they went through. Hold on, hold up. I mean, you're saying that. Hold up. So. You just, so you're saying that regardless of what Pun did, regardless of him spending money recklessly, because this is what recklessly, you said. 100%. Regardless of whatever I agree. Did, recklessly, 20 scooters in the front, 30 Benzes, <laughs> McDonald's every day for everybody, you know, dumb hood, ghetto fabulous shit. So regardless of that. Regardless of that. So you don't think that may, and this is with all due respect, attributed right. to anything that could have put his family in a dire situation. A hundred percent he put his family in a dire situation. Okay. To see what his family had to go exactly. through after he so passed gotta... through, like, I don't see that anything that's wrong without, um, I mean, with, you know, uh, capitalizing off puns the state of the work he's done that now that he's not here and his family can't assets. I mean, that's what fathers do. You know what I'm saying? That's, mm -hmm. that's a pension plan. That's, that's, that's a retirement plan. That's... A will, mm -hmm. basically, is a will, because he was, you know, I mean, yeah, pun was going crazy with the money. Yeah, he, he didn't have no experience with that, you know, on some old real professional shit. But none of us did. You know what I'm saying, and uh, and what I'm saying about twin and brother, is that when you are in charge in a situation that you're in charge of, and you have more knowledge of, and you can see things. A little more, you're a little more responsible. Let's just say they, they just say Joe was a little more responsible than Pun. You know, I think a brother will make those kind of moves for his brother after they pass away. Like make sure the kids got at least fifty thousand dollars in the in the in the scholarship fund. Even if you don't like the mother, you don't gotta give the mother nothing. Make sure the kids die for their college. Make sure that the kids know that they you know even though. His, their father was a little crazy was that he had enough love and friends that looked out for him when they, were, they was in position to really look out for their family. That's all. Is that bad? No. See, I'm talking out of love, though. Right? I'm talking about if you really love somebody. So that's what I'm saying. When you use the word twin, brother, love, I question that. So in your opinion, why do you, why do you think he didn't, you know, and it gets ugly, it gets ugly. Then mm -hmm. I'll become the hater. You know, you make your own choices. It, like I said, this story played out in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you make your own decision, then you could talk about it. But I already spoke my piece all these years, you know what I'm saying? I, I was tight at it for a long time. And not even my situation, I was just, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you sit back and be like, how the fuck? These niggas, yo, these niggas don't see this? Like, y'all see it. Mm -hmm. You see it back and forth, the verbal warfare, the, you know, whatever, he's like, but it is what it is, it's entertainment. You know, it's it's sad that this took place in the entertainment and everything, probably people take it like it's it's just an entertainment thing, but when it's serious and it's personal, it becomes personal. And like I said, man, we from the hood, so we don't know how to do therapy like that. Our therapy is doing this. You know, we, later on in life, of course, time, 
makes you see things in a different way. Like, you know what I'm saying? It happened to me where I could just sit back and just be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's Some people do what they do, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm in good space right now, so I can see that. And I don't regret nothing. Hmm. It played out the way it's played out. Just make sure you you put it in the right, in, you know, in the right light. Don't don't hide nothing. Don't add nothing. Say it for what it is. Hmm. And I'm more beautiful than the truth, man. <laughs> well, um, and what what would you have done to uh, ensure? Because you said it plays out in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the new kids, especially some of the people that may have, you know, you ex explained before prior of how you felt. What do you think? What two questions I have? What do you think that he should have done? You said about the fifty thousand. Give the kids. I'm saying books. that's what I would have done. That's yes, why I said respect, that. Respect, respect. I said that. I said that. And that's what you would have done. Um, you would. If have, I was in that, situation. yeah, you would have allowed his family to reap the benefits of his estate. At least the key. oh yeah hundred percent yeah hundred percent it's supposed yeah, to that, that's that's supposed what, just, to go, yeah. it's mm -hmm. supposed to go to them right and you're trying to say that uh, his family got nothing no I'm not saying that they got some but it uh, wasn't enough what's enough to you what's enough to you if my father worked his whole life and he had uh, this amount of money that he earned. Mm -hmm. And he owed maybe if he owed somebody, all right, take care of the debts he owed. But everything after that is ours. I agree. Mm. Simple. And what was Fat Joe's excuse again? I don't know about excuses. Or what was his reason? Did he ever speak to Miss Liza? Did they have a conversation? No, there was. A, no, it was. It, was uh, it got ugly. So they never like, had the a connection. Was not friendly no more after that with with Liza. You know what I'm saying? So he was at odds with Liza and. You know, it is what it is. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kids. Kids Respect. is different. You know what I'm saying? I agree. That's it. I agree. But, you know, you said that the family lived in the shelter. Oh, yeah. That's, and, yeah, real shit. Hmm. That's, that's unfortunate. It's sad, yeah, actually. But that's it made really them sad. stronger, though. You know, everybody got their cards to play. That's the cards that was mm -hmm. given to, you know, to them. And they, they held it down like G's, you know what I'm saying? So I commend them on everything they did because they, they warriors regardless. Everybody from that circle, I think, was warriors. You know what I'm saying? So, What's your relationship now with, with, with the family? I always going to love them. That's my family. You know what I'm saying? They feel probably a certain way about me. You know what I'm saying? Because I speak my, you know, mm. whatever I feel I saw and I know my truth or whatever my truth is and in the, in, in they don't agree with. But... You know what I'm saying? I just let people be who they are, man. I'm in, that, I'm in that point in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cuban Link didn't start there to me no more. You know what I'm saying? Before I was caught up with that. But Cuban Link story started way before that. And mm -hmm. and, and I got my own things, you know what I'm saying, that I, I believe in and I want the world, I want to share with the world. And, it's, and I'm on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that path, negativity shit, you know, which made me get here, so I don't regret it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And everybody saw it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I had no hand on my tongue and never did. But it was just the way I felt. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's the way it is. Um. So you can, t and, and this is the thing. So you talk about the family, so the family being mad at him, you know, what he's not doing. Because we know, or we know it played out, but you, you, you don't know, or you didn't elaborate why the family may be mad at you. What could have Cuban Link could have done to offend the family because you talk about their business? No, not that. They know I'm saying the truth. They never get mad at that. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't know that. I don't know that. But obviously, they get mad at me. You know? Yo, and cut it out, man. Like, come on, stop. It. Oh, well, they get. Because, stop. Because it's, like, what's up with you, bro? Why are you doing that, man? Why are they mad at you? <laughs> You know why they mad at you. You I, a guy that think. I watched your videos. You ain't got every excuse in the book. You got every plaster for a saw. Now you trying to say you don't know why they mad at you? You know why they mad no, at you. No, I really don't. I, I really uh, don't know because I, I'm the one who always fought for Pun's honor. His family. 
the respect. Uh, I did a lot of things that I think I would want if I would pass away and I would want my friend to do. Like, mm -hmm. I did it. What's except, it? Except probably give out money. Like, make sure they're 100%. If I was a millionaire, I'd buy all my fucking mansions and be like, you never have to worry about it. Yeah, but I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? I had my own shit that I had to deal with. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, it's not like I'm up there and they're down there and I'm talking shit because, no, it's like I caught the bad end of the stick too on my own over here. So I got my own shit I got to fight. But when it comes to that and I look at that, I always, always, always represent my brother with, with nothing Did they love. feel that you also neglected them, the family? Did they feel that you also, they were they mad at the you? Se the separation probably, uh, how things played out where, where you know. But then it, it could be, it could be where, you know, Liza felt like nobody helped her when she was going through what she was going through. So she feels like that powerful shit about it's me now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 you know, I was I was her, you know, her, her husband's best friend. And he's not here no more, so it's like she's by herself in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. You gotta ask mm. them that, you know what I'm saying? Like I know at the end of the day what I, how I feel, and I always, and what I rep, and and how I started this game, and as far as like to the to the hip hop, everybody, I made sure you knew that was my brother, and every time you talk to him, about him, regardless if you would have went double wood, that's my brother, you understand? So it was never about no business with me. It was never about all of that, but it happened. So now, you know, I wish I wish that they could, you know, they still call me Uncle Phil, but. Do I believe it's like that? They're already grown up, you know what I'm saying? And do, they're doing their own thing. And I feel they, they feel a certain way about me that, you know, and and, and their story also about their dad mm -hmm. is it's not fully, um, in, in, like, from, like, I would love to tell them a story about the, their dad where it could bring more love, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it could bring that love. Because I know what they're going through. Like, I know, I, I know. The, the confusion of love and hate of what he used to do to dad and to mommy and all of that. And, you know, it's so much of that that they probably saw that they forgot or they, they don't remember the good ones when he held them and kissed them for the first time when he was born and mm. and, and, and the, the blood, sweat, and tears, of, you know, of him putting a roof over their heads and, and beautiful things he used to tell me about. You know what I'm saying? That part, I think, as a family, you know, it's, it's hard, though. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. Like I said, I, I mean, I, I know I went out on a limb a lot of times, and I said a lot of things that I know my brother would have said and stood for, and, and nobody backed me up, so I feel like that too. You know, I feel like, damn. And right now, Cuban probably is the problem starter. But but hold up, hmm. and and but it's not fair that you could comment on what Joe did, right? And but you got to comment on yourself because she may feel like, you know, your, your thing is that you said that what Joe did. That's not enough for the family, but then you're saying that by you saying, I love my brother, that's my brother representing him, to Miss Liza, that probably wasn't enough. That probably didn't, you probably felt like you didn't put your best foot forward to help them. You saying punish your brother and you love him, we know, we can see, we heard. To her, probably, yo, that's not enough. You saying you love my husband, what that got to do with? 100%. And yeah. she, might, she, she might also put him in the same category with, 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 with Joe. Yeah. Being that you guys are part of the same family, the same team. Exactly. She, oh, she knows better than that. She knows better than that? Okay. Cause she, I, knows, she saw me as a, when I was 16. Of course. But yeah, but now different. it's, it's yeah. the business side now. It's the right. business side though now. You know, you got they, they, you guys are older now. You guys are doing business together. Well, so she got to know at the end of the day who the fuck is popping. Like, who's making money off this music shit? Like, you know, at mm. the end of the day, yeah, it's back. not like I'm over here making millions. Right, right. I do this shit because I love it. And right. I want, you know, as we started something, I'm going to finish it because I love music. But it's not like niggas is caking over here, making millions and showing fucking, you know what I'm saying? Niggas is doing what they do. Because, you know, we, we of course, we got older. We grew up. We got our own families. I'm a father. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's that too. But uh, I'm just saying, I don't know. Like I said, you got to ask, ask them. Her. You got to ask them that. Because you at the that. end of the day, I, I, you know, I, you know. Did you ever try to uh, approach Joe to, to get maybe like the masters or get maybe, the you know, the, the stuff for pun that you can... Maybe help. Pun? No, I have nothing to do with that side of the business. That's mm. between Liza and, and Joe. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's there. I don't have nothing to do with Pun's masters or, or right. his contract. You I know? mean, as far as the, to help, maybe help the family out because you know, you know, she she may not know 
Oh no, she knows now. No, no, they, this been, this played out already. So at right. the end of the day, um, I think uh, Liza got her masters back. I think they settled up something out of, out of court. Mm-hmm. She's good as far as I think that I know about. As far as like you know, getting the the masters and and, and the likeness like uh, for you know the whole estate is to Liza now. Mm-hmm. I think she I, won a, a, a settlement with that. I just feel like what's good for the goose is good for the gander. That's you know that's what I feel. You know that saying. I feel like. You know, um, <coughs> I did hear everybody comment on Joe, but if she's mad at everybody, she puts everybody in the same category except for, you know, but I understand you have your reason as well. Sometimes right. it takes a conversation to understand, like, yo, well, you know, Liza, I'm not making all this money. Maybe she knows something about you that we don't know, and we're going to find out when we speak to her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe I mean, the only thing, like I said, the only thing that maybe the time of uh, me reaching out, like, you know, before when Pun was alive, I'm not there like I used to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, me starting shit on my own, maybe, with Joe, at the, you know, for all these years, they feel like I'm baggage, like if I'm, you know, the black sheep. If Like, that's how I felt when, when you know, uh, when Chris was coming up, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I used to help Chris with his rhymes when he was seven years old, you know what I'm saying? After Pun passing and everything, like, he had a little deal with, with Three Down, if, I don't know if you remember, Benzino's son, and mm-hmm. and they had their own thing. I, you know, I, I was I was active, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, trying to help and, and thing, things like that. When I got my deal in 2005, I tried to help and even put it down through the label. It's just, I don't know. I, do, I really don't know. Now, that goes to a personal level, you know what I'm saying? Maybe she feels a certain way about me, mm-hmm. where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, like she says, she, she loves Pun and she hates Pun at times. She went through what she went through. Maybe she blames me sometimes for not doing more or allowing and seeing that. Hmm. Maybe she had her own memories. So that's what I'm saying. I, I'm very touchy with that. So it's, right. I don't know. I know I didn't do nothing that's not honorable for them to feel that way about me. That's what I'm saying. How do you think his son is doing? Um, as far as far as like, like like dealing with, you know, his his dad not being here and and, and trying to pursue his career. Like, do you feel like he's um. I think it's incredible. I think he is a chip of you know his dad's his dad's tree. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, yeah, yeah, I see him. Yeah, I see what he's doing, and, and and you know he's doing it independently. You know, what I'm saying? definitely. And once again, you see a young prince like that get to that level. I, I, it's hard for me not to not believe that the the industry people that his father helped throughout mm. the years and made millions of dollars and knew that he got this talent. Don't reach out a hand and help that young kid out to be more, even more bigger. So he's not one of those. Um, <clears throat> he's not one of those kids that are a son of a celebrity that, that's getting the handouts and he he's really oh, working no. for everything he's getting. Of course, they all did. You know what I'm saying, especially him, especially in the game. Yeah, mm. he, he's earning it. You know what I'm saying from the bottom, just like his dad. You know what I'm saying. That's why you see Styles giving him a hand and, and, and you know the underground people like loving him. You know what I'm saying, but. I'm just saying his father went through that, so he wouldn't. Right. That's what you do. You know what I'm Even Jesus did it. He died for our sins, like mm-hmm. so us to be better. So you know what I'm saying? Come on, his dad was a, was a king in this game. You know what I'm saying? So why, if his son is is is, is right there and you see it, and he, he's crazy. Maybe he needs a little molding from a professional to take him to the next level. Why nobody goes to help him? Mm. I mean. You know what it is, man. You got to know what it is. You don't believe in coincidence, do you? Hmm. No. Okay, good. Me either. So, so let's go back now. So you, you, you guys are, you know, b- b- before before Pun's death, you know, you guys are you guys are rocking. You guys, you know, obviously selling out, you know, uh, arenas and doing tours and things like that. You know, what um, what went wrong? You know, Terror Squad, you guys had a, a, a part in. You know, so what, what, what made you guys uh, part ways? Um, um, it was, it was, um, I was never a yes man, you know what I'm saying? I was never, uh, not even for pun, you know what I'm mm. saying? And, and that's what I'm saying. So I was never one of those that I follow you if I believe in you, you know what I'm saying? And because of who we are with each other. But I won't be knowing you're doing something wrong and be applauding you. I'll just be there like a, like a dick and just, Stay there. I have to say something to you. Is right. it? That's who I am. So I could be an asshole. You know what I'm saying? Punk could take my asshole shit because he know he knows me, and he takes he knows what I'm saying. It's not it's not for me to you know. There's no strings attached to it. 
because I really feel it. So that's the relationship. That's the difference. You know, Joe, like I said, he came from from the business side more to me. And when he came in, we became brothers. It was a part that we really was like brothers because we was working on one thing, and that's Project Pun. You know what I'm saying? And we was all, he made us, we got involved with that so much that, you know, we like we cl was climbing up together, and it was like so dope, you know what I'm saying? And he made me believe, there was a part in there he made me believe like he had love. Like, you really care. You know what I'm saying? It's not just because you're from over there, T.S., and we from over here, and you had beef from back in the days. Like, all that shit went out the window. It was like, we're a unity. So it was a part, definitely, that I felt like that. And I, that's that's when I closed my eyes. That's when he, he, you know, he was telling me I got to deal with Atlantic, and he was pushing my product. And he was, you know, he was, he was talking to me in the business and was, and we were sharing time with our kids, we get, you know, together. Mm. So it was deeper than that. So that's when really it's like, okay, we fam. And, um, you know, then you start seeing the business side. <laughs> then you start seeing the, you know, I get my deal and it's like, okay, um, okay, I'm gonna get $75,000 for this song. Oh, I talk to my managers. I come up with a deal and I, you know, somebody comes to me and I, I'll send them to my managers. My managers, Joe and Flex at the time, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? And Gilly, road manager. So I would send them to them on my own. You know, if I'm getting $75,000. By the time they get to Joe, Joe already took me out of the picture and said, oh, no, we're going to do the Terror Squad thing. You're going to give me $75,000, and I'm going to spread it the way it is, the way he thinks it should be. So, mm -hmm. okay, a couple of those times happened. So now, okay, think it's going to give me seventy five k. Now you're giving me 5K. You're giving Armageddon 5K. You're giving Pun 10K. You're keeping fifty five thousand. <laughs> okay, mm. cool. Let that man eat. Whatever. A lot of those situations happen. Played along with it. My album coming out. You know, started with Capital Punishment. Mm. Remember, I came over with off the books. So, off the books, Capital Punishment. Bow. I was getting a buzz, right? Who the fuck you mean? Like, you know, fly Pelican fly. Niggas is on me, like in the industry. That's how I got my deal, too. So, okay, cool. My album don't come out after pun. Not mad at all. I was like, hey, hey, he didn't want my album to come out. I was too, 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 I was too green at that time. Joe album, you know, it's like Don Cartagena comes out. Bye, we all helped. Everything, everything was all together. Mm. Like puns, Capital Punishment, Don Cartagena, we all helped, chipped in. And it was a team, blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay. Maybe it's my time. I'm already working on my album. What's up with my shit? But I'm not on it like that. I'm still like waiting on him to tell me, yo, Q, you next, whatever. All right, cool. Bow. Terror Squad album comes out. All right, skip Cuban Link again. Let's go. Terror Squad, everybody. Now, I'm a competition. Now, if you're a businessman and you're looking at that as a businessman, Cuban Link has a boss. Why not take advantage of that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking later on in life where I can see this. I couldn't right. see that there because it's about unity and love. So I'm caught up with that. All right, Terror Squad album comes out. Hey, hey didn't do us great. But it's popping, whatever. Then, okay, Cuban Link shit now, right? Because, you know, I had a hot single in there. You know, mm -hmm. niggas know me with their videos. They, they got used to me already. So with Cuban Link album. All right, the Yeah Baby Now album goes back around. It goes back around again. So, pun is under loud. Can never get mad at that. He got his own label. But then, what happens? I was supposed to come out of pun after Pun's Yeah Baby with 24K mm -hmm. that I've been working for for a year. And... All this shit happens. Like the animosity starts coming around. Joe's not really like backing me up. Now, if you go back into archives, you go back and Remy had the same problem with him when she mm -hmm. split up from him. You know what I'm saying, and maybe it was Joe not, you know, admitting that he didn't like, like, like firsthand like guide everybody right. Because I think he said that in the interview where he knew that he messed up too. You know what I'm saying, but it, it wasn't that. It wasn't that the energy I got from him, you know. The energy I got from him was was different. So we bumped heads a lot of times. You know what I'm saying we bumped heads a lot of times. And then, you know, people show you who they are. That's all, man. That's what I gotta say. I don't want to go back in the past to the point, but you know, he just showed me who he was, and I don't think like my like my 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 uh, who I was couldn't couldn't tolerate it like that without me saying something. And if I say something, I'm gonna be bumping heads all this time, so we made a decision to split ways. And mm. then uh, and then the, the, the shit at Jimmy's happened when I got cut. 
after that, after we settled it down, we went to the lawyer's office. He told me I was whack. I never wanted you down. He only did it because of pun. So I was like, damn, wow. all this time, all this work I put in, you say that about me. So that means wow. something else involved in, in what you, you know, because I know I paid my dues. Of course. And I did it, and I, you know, I was, I was never trying to be the leader. I was, I was playing my part, my position, and you didn't appreciate it. So you know what? Let me do what I do. You do what you do. We split ways, and then an unfortunate thing happened in Jimmy's. Me trying to stop a fight. So he told you to your face that he didn't think that you were nice. Yeah, no, he said I was whack. To your face at the lawyer's office? Lawyer's office. Hmm. But you guys still shook hands and left in peace. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. So, I was I was supposed to give him $300,000 from the next deal I, I was going to get, and that's it. Settled it like that. Since oh, wow. he put me on, since he put me on, I guess, you know what I'm saying, since his... That was just like cover charge for, for introducing me to the game, I guess, because he was responsible. So I was like, no problem, my nigga. Get that. You want more? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, so you mind his own business. So it's okay, cool. That's what you want. No problem. So you agreed to give him $300,000? Yeah. Because you wanted to be out of whatever situation. Yeah. You, know, you, you think I'm whack. You, you know, all the work I put in streetwise. Record wise, you know, when you call me to to, to, to to do a song with uh to help out Puff with the you know what I'm saying, the senorita was there. You know, so I made you look good so many times, mm -hmm. helped you when you was writing albums with pun, like you know what I'm saying, held guns for niggas for you. You know what I'm saying? Like all of that. Okay, cool. So I didn't get mad. Respect. You know what I'm saying? I just like, damn. And I don't want to be nowhere where, where you feel like that about me, my brother. I need a manager that's going to take me to the top and you feel that away. Maybe that's the reason that my album never came out. Because mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't feel like, you know, that I had it. But time told. Right. So at the end of the day, Flowers for the Dead, Hey Mama, still telling lies. Like, niggas, that album was supposed to be shelved, but it came out through the bootlegs anyway. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't hear Cuban Link. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, the fans spoke, time told. So you were wrong. Hmm. So what was it? What was it? Why you didn't drop my album back then? I don't know, you gotta ask him. You gotta ask him how he felt. I mean, he did, he told you that he felt that you were uh, untalented, uh, were whack. A whack. I don't know, but, and. Darbooch. And <laughs> the reason why he felt that you were whack was because of what, y'all were going back and forth and, and arguing, so you would yeah, complain to him. Were you disrespectful? Were you respectful? Did you do things that might made him? No, I have to ask this question. Did you do things that may have triggered him to feel? It was fire against fire. It was he say some disrespectful shit to me that he thought was regular, and I'll say extra disrespectful shit that I know is going to get you madder than you got me. Hmm. It was that. It was like, you know. Tit for tat. Yeah, it's, it's me going into Flex's uh, shit. Flex's shit to do a freestyle. I'm you know, back in the days, we had one rhyme we remembered. So I go in there and I say that rhyme I remembered. And then I, in the middle, at the end of the rhyme, he looks at me in front of Flex and goes, damn, nigga, why you always saying the fucking same rhyme? Don't you got another rhyme? Oh, wow. Right? But it's like, all right, you might be telling the truth, but damn, you're embarrassing me, right? So me, you know you can't do that. I'm quick as a pistol. So at the end of the day, is it wrong if I go, oh, okay, which rhyme are you going to say? The one I'm going to roll for you or the one pun roll for you? Mm. You understand? That happened? Of course it happened. But that's what I'm trying to say. And things like that. I'm just saying you in, 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 a, in a smaller level. Shit like that, you say to me. And he probably oh. felt like, how oh, he's going to speak to me like this. I am the Don. I am this. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes when you get energy like that, it's not good. You know, and you'd rather see it. You know, it took a long time. It took, it took 72 stitches for me to see that energy because of my loyalty. And my clothes in my eyes, so I was, but I wanted to see it, so it had to happen. You understand? Because we started with love. Um, um, hold on, because I'm there not, you go, the lazy scratching the kneecap. There you go. What happened? Yeah, now? Yeah, nah, I'm not. <laughs> see, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't believe in. I gotta. I gotta. Cause this, Holy uh, shit! I'm wasting my truth on you. I don't uh, believe it. Still, you tell no, me. No, I believe you. I believe you. Oh, so I don't okay. believe. I, I just gotta be able to. Now nah, I gotta. I'm not a, I gotta understand something. 
you know, um, I need to understand that if these issues. What? What issues? Um, these issues between you and Joe oh. is some sort of, because when you tell a story like that, right, and it stems from nowhere, unless he genuinely, unless he genuinely in his heart felt that you were whack, unless he genuinely didn't rock with you, it, it, it would seem like there's some sort of animosity there. It was so, always animosity. So there. you ain't. But you, it was, it was, it was more, like I told you, it got to a part where, where the love took over. That's what I'm saying. It was always certain things, but it wasn't from me. It was really from him, who he is. You know what I'm saying? Like because the, you were closer with Pun? Maybe that. Now I can see that. Maybe the jealousy of Dan, this nigga always got these crazy, like these fucking leeches around him. I mean, he looked at me like that back then. He looked at you as a leech. I probably did, I'm saying. I'm just hmm. speculating, I'm saying. He wanted Pun for himself because he had to do business with Pun. He only wanted to do business with Pun by himself. Maybe he looked at that. Maybe he tried everything to do to get us away from him, and we didn't because Pun had love for me. Pun had love for us, and he kept us there. So he had to just submit himself and go. Let me, let me, let me act like I'll be friend these niggas too. And then you said that you and him were friends at one point. You became friends. Yeah, we, we did personal yeah, friendship. Maybe, shit. Maybe, we maybe, did. Maybe, we did. You know, I mean, to me. But what what type of person were you that he may have wanted Pun away from you? What type of what was your characteristic traits? Were you a troublemaker? Were you in the streets? Not from the were same you, street she's on. Yeah, I mean, but that doesn't matter. Some people grow. <laughs> were you? Were you? Yeah, but at that time, were you know, helping pun? He knows Terror Squad crew. Ain't no shit. We come from the bottom. You know, were I come you from help? drug dealers, killers, the same shit. But I was, I was just a little young kid. I wasn't doing none of that. I was around them. Did they respect me? Yes. But you know what I'm saying we grew up around you know Hard Knock City, so it's not like you know niggas. What, what he was looking for. You know, so unless, unless I'm like a, a, a backstabber ass nigga that, you know, or a, a foul dude, never. So, he don't have that on me. Were you helping pun become a better pun? Do you think they- 100%. Okay. 100%. All right. I can see what he's saying, though, as far as um him feeling like he's trying to get you guys away and, you know, give it next to pun. And then you guys still there. He's probably like, yo, what the? Like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, I want, I want... maybe. I'm just giving maybes out. Yeah, and I hear you. Only he could ever answer that. But nobody had, you know, ever through all his career would, I mean, never ask him that. So right. he would tell you probably he's not important. I don't want to talk about that subject. You know what I'm saying? They, um, you've been through a lot. You uh, heard the story at Jimmy's, yeah. right? Um... You, uh, he snuffed your man. Nah. What's up? Move the recording. How's it going? Stop. Yeah, you gotta stop. I text you. That's what I told you, bro. Oh. Every 30 minutes, you gotta press that joint. It's, the, it's not that like that one. Never. Yeah. yeah. He, um, mm -hmm. just press the, oh, right there, G. Right there. Just start and stop. Yes. Up, up. Hold up, right there. Press it again. There you go. Um, heard the story about Jimmy's. Snuffed your man. And this is after you guys agreed. It was to really our man. Like that was a dude that was. Yeah, yeah. But, but this yeah. is after this is after you guys agreed to the three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So in your in your eyes, you know, he told you now. You play devil's advocate here. In your eyes, you know, you, you might have to be mad at yourself a little bit because no. this man told you in your face in the lawyer's office that he thought you was whack. Uh, he offered, you, he said 300000 You sarcastically asked him if he wanted more. So the right. tension was there, but you still, you know, you you might have to blame yourself. You might might, might have been a oh, little. That night? I mean, not being on guard, really, just trusting Oh, 100% something. is my fault. 100%. You know, trusting something that may 100%. have not been there. You know what I mean? Um, being, 100%. Do you think that you were a little bit too cocky? Because, you, you know, like cocky, I, you know, I'm, I'm Cuban Link. I'm not Cuban Link. Like, not because I'm Cuban Link. It's tough like that when you get me there. Tough like that. Oh. When you get me there. When somebody get me there, I'm, I'm like that. And he got me there. Not looking for you know nothing. Just I want to see what you do. That's it. Hmm. 
So the story goes, something happened to your man. Right. Punch yeah, but that, 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 see, that situation came from left field. Came out of nowhere, do you? Yeah, that's a left field situation that, like, if I started or I was looking for it, then I, I would be ready for it. But it played out in a whole different, like, movie setting. It's but, like it started with there out of nowhere, and I'm like, yo, chill. What the fuck is going on here? We having mm. fun, you know what I'm saying? Like, chilling, or whatever we was doing, just that, that that came from, like, like the greatest, you know, Academy Award acting, if I was ever acting, it was that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and, and it was like, it, it took focus of the beef me and him had, in my mind, because now I'm, I came, I, you know, I, I came from a, from a, if I had beef with you, I would start it with you, or you started with me, to now there's a nigga in the middle, and now I'm trying to stop y'all from fighting. Mm. So I'm stopping that from fighting. And then once that set off, I'm like, what the fuck? And then when I'm looking over there, another punch is coming to me right after that. So it's like, oh, oh shit. And then I get up, and I, you know, I start doing what I did with him. And then when he's getting rocked, then they grab me. And then when I'm getting held, somebody draws on my face. Mm. And then a place that I've been there for three years, now after I get drawn on my face, you push me out the back door. So, you know. You said he set you up. Let me say that. Yeah, well, in the interview it said just, you, you felt that he set you up because your man couldn't get inside and you felt the vibes, everything was funny from the game. It probably was years ago. In retrospect, you probably thought about it now like, it probably wasn't a setup. Well, you know? if I if I say he set me up, I ain't say he set me up to get cut. I okay. said he set me up for something bad to happen. Yeah, I felt that. Mm. Like some for something to happen. I felt that. I don't think he wanted me to get cut, and I don't think that. Maybe snub beat up. Respect. Yeah. Maybe and because maybe because you still were. a bitch ass way. If I know you, nigga, we could take it. We could do this. If you're my friend or whatever it is, we have a we'll go in the back alley. We we'll go me and you one on one. You don't think because of your smart mouth that you know. That my editor. not the cutting part. We talking about him being upset because you don't like a guy that holds your tongue too well. Neither you like you don't. Well, give I a didn't fuck. say nothing. It was no shit to be said there. You said something in the lawyer's office. I said something, or he said something. He said something, but you responded with a rebuttal that could be deemed disrespectful. No, and you didn't give a fuck. You didn't give a fuck. You just... That's not disrespectful. That's me playing along with you, with your greed, matching mm. the energy, or your or your anger, matching his energy. Yeah, but yeah, matching his energy, but it's like, like that's it. That's what you want. Like, damn, you try to take my my spirit away by saying I'm whack. All the work I put in, you saying I'm whack. It meant mm -hmm. nothing. So I was more disappointed when he said that. So that came from that. That didn't come from me going, oh, that's what you want. Like I'm fresh face. <laughs> it didn't come from that. You just look like Tony Montana. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you turn, you really turn Cuban just now and then. Nah, I'm just saying it's just like you know, it, it never came out to that. Now, the reason I went at him on, on like CDs later on and came out is because I already knew he was doing the blackballing behind my back. Like, you know, I try to get deals with other people. You know what I'm saying? And, mm. and he already put the squeeze on, on his relationships, people he knew that are big dogs in the game, that it was, that was already telling me, I can't deal with, I can't do a deal with you. You know, I got great relationships with Joe. So once that mm. started happening for six months, that's when I came out and I said, what I, like, I went straight up. Like, so that night you feel musically, like musically, musically. That that night you feel like he he, he might have started black bowling that night also because you said in an interview you said that he, you try and get in and you know you, you and your team had trouble getting in a place that you go all the time. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like that night he kind of like put the word out or you know what I'm saying? Like if you see 100%. Cuban, <laughs> if you see Cuban, he he, he not good here no more. Hundred percent. I still went over there later on though after, mm. after I got cut and all that. Yeah. I didn't go over there in good spirits, but I went over there. Right, right. You know what I'm saying like I felt niggas set me up like. I got on my militant shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all niggas threw me out. So it wasn't just about Joe. Right. It was about Jimmy, too. Like, yo, this is a place where we came for three years. Mm. You know, we got ties with each other. We, we know, regardless, if we want to take it to business, nigga, we brought clientele here. So for you to do that to me, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, y'all picked. Y'all wow. picked either what Joe, either Joe said something to you to do that, or you did this on your own. So I wanted to find out. You know what I'm saying? So I was there. That 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 song you did about Jimmy's that was, that was before that happened or after? Before. Before right? Angie Martinez. Yeah, yeah, that was Angie Martinez. That was her actually her listening party that we went to. Yeah. yeah. How much time did y'all saw each other after that? After I got cut. Yeah. 
uh, twice. One in South Beach. He tried to he tried to surprise me again. With some funny shit. And uh, the other time in uh, the 2004, uh, what was it? The awards? Source of, not Source Awards. It was when, um, when, when uh, Dr. Dre almost got stabbed. Remember that? Inside the VM, was it the VMAs? Yeah, with Young Buck and stuff? Yeah. yeah. I was there. He saw you there? He saw me there. Did you have an incident there? I was with Jimmy Henchman right there, sitting at the same table. And what he, happened? Walked, he walked by me. And when he walked by me, I got up and I started clapping. The only one on the table. <laughs> but Jimmy knew what was going on, right? So he told me, you know, I, I had to get coached because that's when I got the, like, New Deal. And they, they, they didn't want to jeopardize shit with, with, with me, you know, the way I was feeling and all that. So, you know, I, I kind of said, okay, I'll hold my tongue. If I'm in the same room, it is what it is. It's business. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever it was, you know, shit happened, whatever. He, what, he, they, they called his name up for an award and, uh, he, he, he had to make way, um, to come by like the table I was around and go up to the stage and I just got up and I was like this, like, you know, just clapping. And some retarded shit, it wasn't a regular clap, it was just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> be holding my motherfucking, uh, you know, feelings back. But uh, yeah, I did that and he looked at me <laughs> and uh, he kept walking up there and then he got up there and he said, uh, he tried to be funny and said something about Ricky Martin. <laughs> So it was like, yo, shout out to Ricky Martin. And everybody, like, they started laughing, right? Because they, they used to call me, like, Hibbert Punch used to snap on me, say I'm Ricky Martin, because I, I did that the Spanish shit too much. Yeah. So I had the Spanish rhythm with the la, da, 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 la bamba shit, whatever. So they used to snap on me. So he did that, you know what I'm saying? And um, whatever. I held my tongue. They went back, sat down. And uh, the shit popped off with Young Buck and, and, and the Dr. J shit. Mm -hmm. And then motherfuckers was jumping over, that VMAs niggas just jumping. I was, I'm outside, after that, I went to actually have a smoke break in the back and I see niggas just run out. Whoosh, whoosh. I seen Steve Rifkin hopping over fences. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck going on here? You know what I'm saying, I didn't know. So I'm making my way back in, but Joe Joe left somewhere else, he didn't go through the back. And what happened on South Beach? Uh, South Beach, I was doing a show. Um, I think it was with Romeo Entertainment and we had a, I'm going to Venetian, not the Venetian. Oh, man, it was a club that was known. And we rented it out. We rented it out. And uh, somebody had called the club and said uh, that if we let Cuban Link perform there, they're going to burn the club up. <laughs> oh, right? So bitch ass shit like this, right? You know, so the, the owner got scared, whatever. So they ain't let us really do what we needed to do, whatever. Well, after the show, we performed. It was a good night. We're going back to the hotel and then... Uh, you know, niggas tell me that, yo, Terror Squad is like in the back of the alley. You know, in the ocean over there, they got little alleys. I they was fucking doing little huddles over there. So they came back and told me that. I was like, what? So, you know, next thing I'm chilling in front of uh, uh, other hotel I was staying in, the Winter Haven. I was around the corner. It was like 3, 4 in the morning. And we see his cars. Like, uh, uh, uh. Niggas pulling up on some more like this. Like, oh, what? So I was there. I was like with three other guys at the time. And I see Joe. He pulls up inside of me. And I was like, oh, it's you, you bitch ass nigga. Get the fuck out the car. Just like that. That's so why he gets out the car. But he already had niggas coming, right? So it's like a good 15 of them. So no, he's walking. There's too many cars parked. So he can't like jump over. I can't really jump over. So he has to walk to the corner. And really come through. So I'm like, bitch, I, and I, had, a, I had a shot of Hennessy in mine with glass. So I was like, come on, come on, come on, faggot. Pardon can't me. say it's, that it's, word. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but I was just feeling that. Yeah. I, see, right now you got me back into that moment, you know what I'm saying? Even okay. though I'm not feeling like this no more. Like I told you, these are just actual facts that happen. So I'm not telling you that because I'm taking your glow and about this. It's just reality that really played out. So he got out of his car, walking like this. I'm on, I'm on the sidewalk. He's in the coming over he said oh why you got that glass why you got that glass so i said i don't need no glass for you and I smashed the glass on the floor so he's coming when he's coming like that you know we're ready to square up and then the other three niggas coming out on the side so i'm like oh yeah bitch ass niggas right now want to really you you and it was macho the rich player dude 
and the JB niggas. Now these are niggas I had history with, right? And they never, I never had really like problems with them. But they're the softest niggas, in my opinion, at that time. And they, they have this nuts to really come at me like that. So now my attention's over there while Joe's coming over here. So I'm, I'm, once again, they're doing the drop on me where it's like, it's just little old Cuban. The nigga that you said was whack. The nigga that was this and that. So why you need all these dudes? Like you, you don't, so, so I guess the fair one would never happen because of that, in my mind at that time. You know what I'm saying? Because I seen the way it was. Cool. Cool. Never got to fight, nothing. Never just split up. Did you run? Did he say he chased you? No, I chased him. Me and my man GQ chased him across the street in the ocean. I broke a couple of chairs. But took, I'm confused if took he the had bottom, me. Took the bottom of the chair out with a if stick. He... And as soon as we were about to give it to him, then he said to me, oh, you want to act tough now because the cops are coming. And I looked, and it was a million cops coming. But you just say you had 15 people, so and how would they allow you to chase him? Because niggas was going nuts that day, especially me, in the middle of the streets, blocking chairs, throwing chairs at them. So they never got a chance to even come home. Only the three niggas that came, okay. Joe came, other niggas was behind, like they had ratchets, whatever they had, you know what I'm saying? But then it was a chair, a, a, a war with chairs, because we threw all the chairs. My dudes that I was with, only three of them, we, yeah, so we threw the balcony, the chairs off the balcony, then they got the chairs, because they never broke, it was like bamboo. They started throwing the chairs back, and I'm in the middle of the street, and I'm doing, some some the neo matrix shit and I'm hitting all the chairs with this shit. I grab one chair, I break the thing, and then my man comes from upstairs. My man Q takes one of the big ass glasses, the round glasses, goes and throws the shit in the middle of the street. Gosh, that shit broke. Shh. Now me and him, that's when we seen the opportunity. That's when I broke the chair, and then we caught Joe over there by the by the palm tree next to where you get to the beach. Mm. And that's when he, you know, me and him had him. He he said, um, I didn't cut your face. I said, I never did say you cut my face. Okay, you cut my face. I never said that about him, you know what I'm saying? So, it's so many times that he says that he didn't cut my face that I could say that I know he didn't mean for my face to get cut that day. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't take the fact that I know you want probably something bad to happen that day, but not that, you know what I'm saying? Would you, would you want to, would you want to, did you ever want to squash it with Joe? Sit down and talk, have a conversation for old times' sakes? Um, make peace. I love peace. You caused a lot of uh, turmoil in the studio today. <laughs> yeah, I bl yeah. <laughs> no, would you would you, would you want peace though? Honestly speaking, like, would you ever have a conversation with him, or you felt or you feel like it's too far? You know, and and there's two questions. Like, do you feel like it's too far? Listen, when, when you're ready to, when whoever it is in life that's ready to talk to me about real shit and facts about anything, I'm willing to listen. And I'm willing to talk. When you come with no lies to make yourself look better or to make something that didn't happen or paint another picture, that I know what happened. So once we could go to that, through that dialogue and we could relate on something and then we could find out what had really happened and fix it or say something that probably makes it better, you know what I'm saying? Something that, then I'm always down to do that. But do when you, you start off with, you What know, are you referring to? You're a liar, like. <laughs> I mean, what are you referring to exactly? What conversation would you want him to be honest about for you to sit down, what would you what would you want him to be honest about? For you and him to sit down and talk about, you know, instead of just making peace, what would you, what uh, what's the honesty that you want to hear from his mouth? It's ugly. It takes a lot of admitting for him, soul searching for him to say what I want him to say. But that's the only thing. That's the only way he's gonna free his soul. What do you want him to say? Things that are gonna make him look ugly. To what he holds most dearly which is notoriety, popularity, business, and music, entertainment. Sometimes you can't admit certain things, some ugly shit you do to get to the rank that you wanted to get to. You understand? So that's, now would that's, you, that's what I'm saying. Would you accept that if, if you spoke to him privately or, or would you feel better if he did it on a public platform 
and let the world know what's going on. I really have no care in hearing them say anything because I know, you know what I'm saying? So right. It's for him, really. You know what I'm saying? So it's for him. Would you respect it more, though, if, if it was on because a public, that comes public platform? That, co- that, that means he can never right. let me get up or do what I need to do in the game of hip-hop or my music career because of that. Because mm. it's like, that means your conscience is going to eat you if I do good. So regardless, you're going to be my enemy for life, even though I'm telling you the truth. And if you took advantage of me in any way, you know, I, I know you did. But you're never going to say you did because it's a rep you have to. It's an empire that was built that if, and, I, and I'm the bad one. I'm the one that probably could bring down that empire because you build it off what you build it off. And to me, it's lies. Hmm. It was talent about you know some other people's talent, but you built it. That's the empire. It was the empire regardless. So now you surround yourself with people that protect your empire. You surround yourself with friends that are powerful. So now if I go against that empire, other people got equity in that. You pay people's rents. Mm-hmm. You pay for other kids, other people's kids to go to school. So now I'm the enemy on that level, you are saying? So it becomes crazier. And that's when you get older, you start seeing it like that. Me, I just want to do what I do. Like I said, that man's my uh, that man's name after this, as far as like if you wanted to recap on what, what went on in my life, I can't lie and I got to say that. But as far as me with the extra like, you know what I'm saying, on, on that note, like feeling the way I felt back then, it's like, it's not gonna happen, no matter how much they, they push me to. You know what I'm saying? It's these times when they push you more, though. You know that. So yeah. that's, that's why I need God. But the thing is That's that why you need God. You need Jesus to walk through these kind of, you know, situations so you could do what you do and stay focused on the main goal. The yeah. thing is that peace is, 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 is setting an example. So, you know, what example would you be setting for the younger people if you can't sit down and have a conversation and, and rectify, especially if you know, and you just said that you know you don't think he meant for you to get cut, and he didn't cut you himself. So you know, like a conversation, you know, what do you would apology or something? I don't need an apology. You don't need an apology. Man. I'm just saying the conversation. Like, you know, do you think a, a conversation would bring peace to both of you, or are you just saying you don't, you know, you really don't care? It already played out to me though. It's been too long. You know what I'm saying? So it's like never too long. You know no, that. not for me. I don't like I said, I got no hate towards that man right okay. now. I don't have no hate. I don't blame him for anything no more. I accept it. Those were my cards. That's it. Once you accept that, then I could get move on. Because the vision of what I need to do is more clear now. And it doesn't involve you. That's the only thing I'm saying. Did you feel away when my song went on Hot 97 with him? At the time, I was still, yeah, a little bit. But not not after I thought about it. When I first saw it, I was like, dang. <laughs> okay, mice. He got mice, too. Hmm. But then I thought about it. I was like, you know what, man? Mice is, is, is it, you have to be around that. You know, this, like I said, like, this community, when it comes to entertainment, it's, 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 it's tight. It's snitched tight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you have to do this with, with with people. Sometimes when you don't you don't have to like them, you're doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I never got mad at on some personal level that yo, damn, you know. But uh, you know, mice mice is a whole different beast. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's on, he's enlightened. You know what I'm saying? And and in his own way, so he's focused on what his goal is, and that's it. His goal is not oh, let's make a Fat Joe duo together, whatever. And if it was, it was. But I'm saying he got his own path, and he's. He doesn't care who's there. He's got to just spread his message, and that's it. So I respect that. Last comment pertaining to this subject. Um, Joe said he looked out for Pun. Joe said he looked out for you. Can you say, would you sit here right now and admit that Joe had looked out? No, no, for real. Stop. It's serious. What'd you tell, what, 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 what'd you say? Like, it's hard for me to admit shit? I saying. think I admitted things in yeah, life. today, today, I mean. Oh, today's a special? Yeah, yeah I mean, you uh, know. Do, do the funny sound shit. <laughs> 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 do some shit. You know what I'm saying? Would you admit yeah, that he go. actually looked out for you? Like, would you be like, yo, Queen Flip, yo, you my man? Yo, you know, because you're a supporter. It's a lot of, of things. Of course with... Joe looked out for me. Of course Joe looked out for Punt. Now, you gotta tell me the level of looking out. Now, if you look out for somebody, let's see, this is the this is where your beard just starts moving by itself. No, no. This I'm is when it starts moving by itself, and your stomach is looking at me. You shouldn't let do, stop. 
All I'm telling you is this, my nigga. Listen, when somebody do a favor for you, yeah. and it's that's looking out, right? Yes. His lookout is I took those guys out of the ghetto. They ain't shit without me. That's his lookout to you. Did he say that? Or that's I'm, a... I'm, I'm just asking you if somebody tells you that. Um, After you worked hard, you made you, whoever you was at, made you look good. He gave you opportunity, or was it somewhere where y'all worked together and built it, not from the ground up, but from level one mm -hmm. to level twenty? What's the lookout? What's the lookout? Do you think? After you've seen everything, did Pun look out more for Joe or did Joe look out more for Pun? Your opinion, without me even being here. As a fan of hip hop, if, if you ever seen Joe back in the days when he started, then you've seen Pun, what would you say? I can't comment on that. Come on now. I can't. I wasn't there. I don't, you know. I'm talking my. I mean, business wise. No, no, no. You don't know the business. I'm just saying when you first heard Pun, you seen Pun, you seen what he did, you seen Joe come up. Who looked out for who more in the business as far as music? I just said business wise. But musically, though. Musically. Like okay. hearing, watching, hearing. Not um, the paperwork, I'm saying. No, we we're not talking about the paperwork. Yeah, we're we're talking about, um, Pun. <laughs> Pun would be because Pun was on the forefront. Took him to the next level, lyrically. Yes, right? yes. Okay, and you, G, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, growing up, I, I was, I was, you know, younger when they first came out, so I didn't maybe look into it that deep. But hearing the story today, and hearing how you broke it down, and really getting the insight now, you know, I, I feel like you know, definitely Pun took it to the next level. You know what I'm saying? I, I do talented, feel, talented. Work. Now, wise, I, I, talent I, I do feel like you know, of course, we have to give Joe the credit of. And that's what I'm saying. Ha have, having the, Joe gets he, the credit. You yeah. looked out, my brother. You, yeah, he looked out, yeah. You picked the right dude. Because he was already on. money, definitely looked out and helped us with giving us the chance. He was in position already. To get, yes, he was so, in position already. He right. started that. So you have to. You, give him that credit for that. To, yeah, but, right. but it's not just. But after that, what happened? Like you right. said, you guys worked together. But what I'm saying is that. Helped build a, you know. And you have to know what was your interest in that. By doing that, by, by looking out for somebody, you look out for them how? What is your the definition of look yeah, out? Yeah, first of all, can we, can we, But what is your definition of look out? I want to know. Yeah, 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 stop it. Stop <laughs> it, man. Like, oh, listen, listen, listen. First of all, to the public perception, of course, we're going to say that pun, because pun, you know, Joe put pun on the forefront, you know, um, he was pushing him. Yes, he was. And, 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 and pun helped Terror Squad or with the notoriety and the stuff that he did and Go to the next level, yes. but that's because Joe. I think it was a team effort. I pushed him. It wasn't. That's because Joe pushed him. That's because Joe decided to. to, to whatever if it's, if, if, it, if, it, if it's if it's a business move, you just said you, but that that be a contradiction because you just said your man really didn't know the business. It's not that what I'm saying. I'm saying is that when you when somebody look out. So for he you, looked out for him. When somebody look out for you, and you do quadruple the amount of payback, mm. how much is for you to? Get, how much would satisfy you? Mm. It's what I'm saying. Like I did so much after that lookout for you that you haven't said yet. But but, yeah, but yeah, you looking out for us. What about the initial? If he didn't look out, course, where would you be? Everything starts. Cuban, like that. where we come on, man? Stop 100%. being ignorant. hundred percent. No, who knows? But, you but, 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 but you're not being ignorant right now. I'm you're never not, gonna be ignorant. You're not being ignorant. All I'm saying is that but everything say, starts somewhere. Ignorant. Everything, my nigga. You know, we came out the water. The first sperm cell that fucking went into a fish's butt. The fucking human came out the water. Something starts always somewhere. He looked out, bro. Of course he did. I never say he didn't. You're okay. the, I'm just trying to give you my breakdown of when you say look out. So I could warn the young shorties. So okay. I could give them that message. Well, mm -hmm. Give the message to When you. somebody look out for you, make okay. sure you pay them back. And if they're not satisfied with what you give them. Then they had an ulterior motive. There you go. Smart mm -hmm. beard. There you go. Smart. Got you. Got and that's what you don't want to hear. You want to be saying, I'm fucking ungrateful. I, I no, don't say, think, I, how do you want to say he looked out? No, my no, nigga, listen. I, I don't think we built a great, we built something legendary when we started something. Mm -hmm. And if it, it wouldn't have started, if, like I said, I have to go back now and look at it like, if that nigga Joe was not in that bodega and Pun wasn't there, that right timing, the earth, the, the, the life mm -hmm. made that happen. That was beautiful. After they took on for that in the studio, beautiful. Connections, beautiful. Energy, everything was there. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's something that I don't regret. 
It's mm. something that I know everybody played their positions, you know what I'm saying? And, and and Joe did, man. Joe Joe is a entrepreneur in this game. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He's he's gonna be a legend when he's not here no more. After all these years. I'm not saying that. I'll never take that away from him. Now, if you could take it, like I told you, listen to me. I told you from the get-go. I said, when you look at Fidel Castro from my fucking far, mm. you have to respect that man. But if you lived there and mm. went through what wow. got the effect of his ruling, mm. you would look at him different. Yeah. I heard that earlier. There you go. Same thing. Mm. And you look like Fidel with that beard right now, a little bit. All you need is a green hat and an army suit. So, so now after you, you, you got a new deal now. <laughs> you got the new deal now after you know. Post. Well, no, no, yeah, all these years it's just maybe uh like the level I'm on right now is it's, it's a little more business. You know what I'm saying? As far mm -hmm. as like, you know, I, I know I have to take the bull by the horns and do my own thing and and really depend on myself and start everything from from ground zero and um and uh it's not I wouldn't take it no other way because at the end of the day this is the happiest I've been in a long time. Right. This is the first time I could write a song without the anger. You know what I'm saying? Without without me referring to something y'all might think is far. And, and, and even back then when I didn't even think about, you know, like talking about, oh, I wasn't even talking about that dude. People would say that because I'm saying a hardcore rhyme. So it's like, right. you know, I just feel free. It's a big lift on my shoulders where my music could, could the way it's coming out now feels so like, 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 like where I supposed to have been in a long time. So I'm happy with that. You know, I'm happy that that I've made God a bigger part of my life, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, he's letting, like, all I asked him to do for me is just show me the snakes, you know mm. what I'm saying? And, and and try to hold my temple for me. So uh, that's all I expect from him, you know what I'm saying? And take care of my kids, and you know, like fathers do. But uh, besides that, man, I'm happy with the world, man, you know what I'm saying? And I know the goal that I need to do. I, I always wanted to make a mark on hip hop on my own, right. you know, knowing that pun passed us the baton, not just me. You know what I'm saying? We passed Joe on, he passed, you know, Says, you know, a Prospect, he did all that. But, you know, I know my path, you know what I'm saying? It's just, um, I feel good right now about my music. I feel good about life, you know? And um, that's it, man. We, we ain't trying to take the past with us. We trying mm -hmm. to make, you know, new futures. That's all. So, what year you got knocked out in the club? <laughs> <laughs> I never got knocked out. Let's get that straight. Knocked down by BX Hover. Knocked Hover's. down, yeah, not knocked out. That was, that was yeah. crazy. Knocked. Yeah, big punches. That was like Mike Tyson hit me. Uh, what, that was like a year and a half ago. Really? I think. Wow. Yeah, like, a, like two years. Did you deserve it? I like you, man, but I have to ask you these questions, you know. No, I like the questions you asked me. I'm not, and I appreciate that, you know, and I want to apologize for... Um, listen, did I deserve it? No. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold the fuck up, bro. <laughs> Allow me to apologize and give you your respect, man. No, my brother, go ahead, man, do you. Man, you be, you wouldn't be Queen's Flip if you didn't say it the way you say it. Nah, I don't want to do all the crazy stuff, man. Listen to me, man. The camera, listen to me. When you say deserve it, uh, was I saying any untruth shit? Was I talking shit on my ass? No. Did I bring up a subject that was touchy and shouldn't did it there when I was drinking? Yes. Was I close to that man enough to say that to him? No. Mm. Did I deserve to get punched because, you know, I don't know him like that. He's not my man. And I said some hardcore shit that maybe even offended you? Yes. So, yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. Did you guys ever rectify it? Who? With who? You. With that dude? No, oh, man. This, come on. That's hood stuff. You know what I'm saying? That, that was hood stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like me and him met before. You know what I'm saying? And it was the other way around before. So I did that to him back then in the days when he was younger. He caught me now. <laughs> uh, was it something that... Uh, I mean, it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We all got... Friends, enemies, you know, say we got history with people. Was that supposed to be out there like that? That's what that's what surprised me more than anything. It's like, yo, if we hood, what are we doing with this? Like, what? We, you got a security cam on this. Like, niggas really went to your security <laughs> yeah. camera, snatched out the tape, and put it on Latin World Star. Like, that's crazy. Wow. That's supposed to be, once again, that shit, that shit happened to me before. Nigga, I'm a nigga, I'm a brawler. Like you know, we it's not just you know I don't take credit in that, but nigga, I get down. Like we fight. I'm from that school. 
You know what I'm saying? Stab, wound, whatever, shoot. We do that. Know that. He knows that. So now, when you sit back and you watch the fucking security camera, <laughs> okay, who the fuck went into that establishment and got that tape out? And what reason would you put it out for? To make me look bad? All right. So you had to go through all of that to, for that? And and the stuff that you got attacked by him for was street stuff that you cannot elaborate on is in the streets. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go there. Respect. Yeah. Okay. He knows about it. If you interview him, Axel. Hmm. He's what, the owner of the boxing thing? I don't know why he is. Man. And you never saw him after to speak to him, to shake his hand, to say no. he put me? Was there any retaliation? No. I apologize, remember? I did a video, I think. I don't trust Not really apologizing. I, 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 tr- I really don't trust you. Don't trust his apologies? apologies? I don't trust this man at all. Really? You should trust me. I don't. I don't really trust you, bro. You okay. came in here, you put this type of spell, <laughs> the camera. Like, that shit, I'm, I'm upset, bro. Trust me, man. I just have to see how. What was the first thing you asked me when you texted me in, in IG? I forgot. That means you don't give a fuck. See? That's what you do to all your clients? You do that? No, I, I fuck with you. Your first thing you said, I heard you are official. Mm. Right? That's true. That sounds like something you would say. So, But that's coming from a perspective of a young man who watched you grow, watch your career, and who always wanted you to know personally why you... And I didn't look at it. I'm being honest. Until this... Okay. Until, no, I'm being honest. No, your career, I did. You know, know who you are. No, but I'm saying maybe... I'm I thought about, you probably had, you know, talk to some people, some real dudes. I did, but I don't it. need to get into all that. But I'm just saying, somebody probably just vouched for me once, I think. I think real niggas could vouch for me. It's just who you talk to, right? But you paraphrased... So all I'm saying is that I'll and I call only... a lot of people like, yo, what's up with Cuban links? Call like two people. Mm, you know, he told me, like, yo, you know, ask him about the, you know, the video going around. It's been going on. It's two, it's two years old. I didn't know. I didn't oh, know. okay, okay. Yeah, he didn't get punched. I was like, we didn't get punched. Yeah. Cuban links. But beautiful. Did you see that video? Yeah, you fell. You heard your face fell. Got up quick. You said, hey, you went to the bar. You told him, all right, I'm good. I'm good. No, that's what I'm saying. But, you know, but did you see the, 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 the the 3,000 pounds of pressure per slap, like, that was a big punch, right? Yeah. Big fucking punch. Hmm. And I was twisted, right? Mm-hmm. All right. I don't get that. I'm sorry. So you no, no, no. No, 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 no. I was on. off point. I was, I, no, I was drunk. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was drunk. Like, not, not, that has nothing to do with it. What I'm trying to tell you is that you are 6'3". I am 5'8". I am drunk. You got a flush on me. You hit me with a Mike Tyson punch. And you still good. And I get up from you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yo, G, chill out. He's That's official, what I'm saying. Bro. That's what I'm saying, my brother. He did. He did get back up. Bro. I saw it. He got back up. Like yeah. a champ. You wasn't, you wasn't down for a long time. I saw it. You got back up. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Like a That's champ. It. So you Did know? you remain in there? No, no. Where, that day? Yeah, did you remain in the bar? Oh, no, no. After that happened, um... I went to the to the bar and I, I was bleeding, so I, I took a napkin, calm, tried to walk out the front the same way they put him out. The guard told me, hey, you can't leave through here, you can't leave through here. So I had to go through the back. So I went through the back and I went to the front. I was waiting for somebody to show up, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why, you know, I knew what happened, but I'm like, okay, shit, I'm drunk. That shit kind of woke me up. Now we're gonna get it on. But you know, the, I just got calm and I went to the front of the establishment and I waited there for five minutes. I'm saying, my man said, let's go. He went to get the car. I was there by myself, five minutes. Nobody came out the car. I mean, the bar, nothing. It was like the the most tranquil place ever. Like, hmm. like niggas are still eating dinner and this shit happened. I was in the wrong place, you know what I'm saying? I was definitely in the wrong place. So it's my fault. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It could have been uglier than that. It could have hmm. been really crazier than that. But I didn't know they was filming me either. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know yeah, they was gonna yeah. put that shit on World Star. Yo, this is old beef. Hmm. You know what I'm saying, or whatever. Like this is some shit that you keeping in the street. This is how we was taught. When I guess niggas want to see Cuban like in a bad situation that bad, that, that you do that. So, how you feel about Six Nine? Six Nine, he got to to a, he got into shit that he couldn't handle. We all seen it, you know. 
You a fan of you 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 a fan of 6ix9ine? You a fan of his music? You a fan of No, nah, I wasn't really a fan of it. I like what Shorty was doing, you know what I'm saying? He was Spanish, he was doing work in both angles, the Spanish and this, you know what I'm saying? He was repping New York, you know, I liked all that shit. He had the slick New York shit. Mm. But uh, you know what I'm saying? He ain't built for what that life was, you know, about, you know, and he was in too deep. Mm. That's it. No excuses, he's a fucking snitch. <laughs> Son, that's it. Take us back real quick. Um, I saw something online about you you getting your first tattoo and uh and and big pun being an influence in that. Oh yeah, yeah, we went to get this first tattoos together. He gasped me. He, that's when he put the Punisher, the one with the blacks on it. Mm. He put that shit on his thing, and, uh, and he told me uh he'll he'll pay for my tattoo and shit. And I, and I we was thinking about like rap names at the time. Mm. me and him, we started coming you know with a little crew. Like me and him, and uh, it was rough and rugged. We thought about it. We both liked it, but we wasn't hundred percent sure on it. So we went to my man Zev, well his man Zev at the time, over there by East Tremont back in the days, and uh, mm. so he did his joint, he finished up his joint. Then uh, you know he did. This, I got a skull and shit, skull knife, and a gun, a smoking gun on my shit, and I put rough and rugged. But this nigga fucked up the B on it, so that shit looked like buff and bugged <laughs> through all these years. So uh, when I finished that, I told him, yo, get your shit. Like, the thing is, like, get your shit rough and rugged. Let's go, nigga. Like, we a team. And he was like, this the hell no. I ain't doing that shit. Because he seen the the buff and bugger shit. So he caught me with that bullshit. Yeah. You know? I still got it, though. You also said that um, that you told the story about having a fight with Rockefeller. Yeah, we had some squabble. Yeah. And then you also heard that pun chase Jay Z around the couch. I never heard. I never said none of that shit. You never said that shit. I never said that. I said pump pull out a Rambo knife, and niggas was getting like other niggas was getting beat up. But I never changed. No, I mean, chase Jay Z in no way. It was um, it was shit that popped off. Like it was in Carbons on Fifty Sixth, and, and uh, like I said, I ain't know the. I think Jay-Z was supposed to perform, they're supposed to give him some guap, like some Terror Squad uh, member, paying him to do something. I, I guess it was, like he didn't want to come out. He, I, I think that the whole shit was, uh, I don't know. It was some business that was done with Jay. Uh, I think Jay broke out or something, because he was like, he never said he was gonna perform, whatever, or something like that. The whole Rockefeller was in the same like VIP session we was in, we was in. everything was good. And then the promoter dude that, uh, that was a terror squad member came out bleeding. You know what I'm saying? So once he came out bleeding, said, yo, they flipped on me, twin. Bloodied up. Niggas saw that. Niggas started flipping on whatever, you know, niggas in there. Like Rockefeller dudes. I don't know. I can't. It wasn't no like. I can't. The only one that was there was Memphis. You know what I'm saying? And Memphis was there. You know what I'm saying? He's the one who cracked shit open first. <laughs> you know, besides that, it was like, I know I, I know I got up in the bar and started throwing bottles at niggas. He popped on somebody in Memphis, but yeah, niggas popped on it, nigga. So, and then shit went high wire. You know what I'm saying? And all of them, you know, whoever was that was Rockefeller and in, in, in the in the VIP. Wait, Memphis be popped on somebody, or he got popped. Okay, on keep first. saying it. You want to keep saying it? What do you want me to do? <laughs> Memphis cracked somebody in the head with a bottle. Got That's it. all I know. You know what I'm saying? And then later on, niggas got beat up in in, in in the VIP and chased out. But I can't say Jay Z was there. I didn't see him there. I ain't see Dame, I ain't see, you know, like the big dogs, I ain't see them there. But niggas, all the niggas that was from supposed to be Rockefeller got chased out. That's all I can say. And then you stated that Jay-Z saw you one time and told yeah. you that the record wasn't. Yeah, he saw me in DMX's listening party afterwards. I was there dolo and he pulled me to the side and told me, yo, told Joe and Pun that that record was not for them. Don't take it like that. And what was the record? I forgot. I forgot. He said a line in there. It was in a mixtape. He said, fat dude, niggas, some shit. But I don't remember it. But it's facts. You still don't believe in me, Queen. You still not believe in me, Flip. <laughs> nah, I fuck with you. No, no, no I, yeah, do, we, I do, I do, I do. I think that, um, I think that, you know, I wanted, coming into this. Source interview. Money, Source Money did the song, though. It was Source Money. He did the song. Yo, why you keep interrupting me for, bro? Because you just keep rec I'm recollecting what you're talking. That's all. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Like, what's up with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I came into this interview not wanting, you know, not wanting to have the same 
typical interview that you had You're with right. everybody else. It's been a repetitive shit yeah. throughout my whole. Yeah, but I think this was different. Yeah, it's different because my attitude. No, but even the stories and the answers and the questions that we ask right, you, right, you're right. I think it's different. Um, I watched and I paid attention. This was very important to me. Yeah. And I can say that like I, I didn't want to come in like everybody else because when I put your name in, I did saw the shit with the hat on. I saw the Jack Thriller shit. I saw all that shit. And yeah, I didn't yeah, want yeah. to emulate the same thing. Right, right. And this is why. So I, And also, I mean no disrespect at all. I think that you're dope. You're official. Thank you. And earlier I was trying to apologize for like the, the crazy camera shit that was going on because that shit was fucking. <laughs> you said it on the coming. They should have recorded. They should have had a camera, a little drone in here. I just don't understand what's going on. <laughs> it, it, it hasn't, yo, I don't even know. That's I don't really believe me. I don't yo, know. He really, he really walked in before the show started and said when he when he comes in to certain shows and, you know, things like that, you know, things things kind of go bad or, you know, technology. He says something. What you say? It just, it just, it just, uh, the energy, man, the energy be fucking with so shit. So you try like, to, electronics start going it, wrong, like, you know. And if it was pun, that means pun was saying you were talking bullshit, so you turn the cameras <laughs> off. No, I think, it, I think, <laughs> I take it, I take it like, you know, I got, you know, some, some angels behind me and they always there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they give me, uh, they sure that they still there. So it could be my pops, it could be pun, it could be all that, you know what I'm saying? Great energy we carry I'm, with us. I, but I also want to commend you because you did say that. Uh, I like the fact that you said that. I didn't like the extra shit behind it, but I like the fact that you said that even to the youth that you would sit down and have a conversation, you know, with Joe. I never heard you say that before. Right. Um, yeah. I, no, I wasn't in that space. But but once again, like, um, it has to be it, under it, certain. It has to be admittance of of not for camera. It's it, you know. I like that. That's what I'm saying. Not for camera. It's got to be that you know that I know. So let's start there. Mm. Why did you do that right there? Like specific shit, because those are the specific shits that that took it o- overboard. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know. if you can go back to to you know um, pre Terror Squad and you know before that stuff happened, like would you change anything as far as your, your decisions you made as far as signing and you know anything? That- nah, that was destiny. I let it play, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have got to this point if it wasn't for that, so. That's right. You know, we all go through what we go through. Yeah. It's just, do you learn from it? Do you make you a better person? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think I think it, it, it gets mm-hmm. us to a, a place where we, sometimes we gotta hit rock bottom. Right. And when I say that, I don't mean in an alcoholic way, I'm saying you gotta hit rock bottom where it's like, look around you, who's there for you? How much do you love this? You gotta ask yourself these questions. What would you do to do this? You know, how much morals would you keep to 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 to, to get this? What road would you choose? Mm. You know what I'm saying? I could have chose the bitch ass road a long time ago. A lot. And I never chose, you know what I'm saying, because um my upbringing and, 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 and just what we believe, you know what I'm saying? You know, you gotta remember you gotta look at your, your kids in the face and, and 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 they gotta believe who you are. So you know, I'm a strong believer in that. We prideful, right? Yeah, we prof. Don't involve me in that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you think say yeah? Don't involve me in that. What artist did Pun did not like? <laughs> what do you mean do not like? Like lyrically, or what as artist, person? You, 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 you like to ask? Yo, yeah, what's up with My you, nigga? Man? But you asking me things about Pun, like Pun. You know how many times me and Pun laughed at niggas because they was trash. I'm not gonna tell you the artist. Hmm. Why not? It's because I'm not. Because that's not good. <laughs> we just laugh like little kids. Yo, these niggas are trash. Right, so who did he and it's be me and him gigging. And then this nigga Joe's introducing us to him. And we're like this. <laughs> so who did he? We did that as who little did kids. He, who did he like? Everybody. He loved mm-hmm. everybody. As far as like artist-wise. Like he loved baby. everybody. Pun Pun was a happy fucking soul when he came to that. Like he, he was like, you know, he was humble. You know, uh, when it came to the game of hip hop, as far as like they all loved him, they accepted him. You know, Joe made it easier for him to get accepted also, but when they heard Pun, there was more. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so it was a great combination. Is so, Pun in your top five hip hop artists of oh, all yeah. time? It's not my number one. It was mm-hmm. a presidently, but I'm not going to say that. Like, as far as like. Nah, that, I just, is, is your no, opinion? My, yeah, is your opinion shit, you know? Of course, man. Who else you know is in top five? Anybody who come from where we come from, as far as like what Pun did for. 
for let's not get racist, but Latino, no, of course, yeah, Puerto yeah. Ricans, like you know, what I'm saying, whoever seen his what he did as far as the right. game of hip hop, but before pun, there was no MCs that was Spanish getting respected on the same level like black folk was was getting you know respected. Whoop. Never. Whoop, whoop. Slow down. There you go. There you go. Slow down, my we talk, brother. We, we took stop. We're talking. De- Slow down. Then in fact, just talk about something like that. Right. Then he just do something like that. Talk about something like that. Then he had a clip or going viral where he talk about uh, Latinos and. Right, but I got mm-hmm. a different view on it. I'm just talking business. I'm saying, shit, I call myself a nigga all the time. Do I know it's wrong? Yep. But when we go back into the shit, yes, nigga, I'm like, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a bad habit. We come from where we come from, and we use that shit like it's, it's, it's it doesn't mean that to us. But mm-hmm. when you put it on a big scale, yes, it's disrespectful. But what the fuck? <laughs> That's where we come from. Fuck, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know. But um, yeah. I mean, uh, who else was he in top five? G Rap, Big Daddy Kane, mm. Pac, Biggie, Nas. Yeah. That's five already, so Pun's going be six. Uh, pun, pun is the number one, one without you seeing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are my tough I mean, but I, come on, I got, I'm going to help you. Yeah, but G-Rap? Mm-hmm. G-Rap, number one, when I was coming up. Kane, you know, Rakim, anyway. Rakim I got into later. I was Pun's favorite uh, artist, Rakim. Mm. He was yeah. older. He was older, so he got rock him a little more with the wow. sun moves and stars and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I was too, I was just I, I just love like metaphors and and and, and the shit, you know, gangster shit G Rap was spitting, the way he spit it, you know what I'm mm. saying? So it was different. When he said you can catch me in a cherry red <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> he did. He had a cherry one fifty. I know. You know? I know. He was there? No. Okay, I wish. I took a big breath before that line too. Was, you can catch yeah, me in the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Um, what is your overall goals now? Oh, to make a to make a impact in music, like extra now, because I, I felt like I never got my fair shot really. Without no sobby story, you know, you know, whatever. I'm just mm-hmm. saying to to make a look like a creative. Uh, like uh, Mark on music. I'm not just thinking about hip hop anymore. So I'm talking about just music as itself. You know what I'm saying? Of course, bringing hip hop with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that either. But like to get that shot where it's like Q was the like the like Cuban thing was like the illest Cuban ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like Pun was like that's the realest Boricua ever. Shit like that. Like you know what I'm saying? I would like I like like that. How you got the name Cuban Link? Um, my first name was Lyrical Assassin, so it was like, well, it was Filski, then Lyrical Assassin, then Cuban Link. So it's a gradual growth to it. Lyrical Assassin was too general. Cuban Link, um, it was just what it was. Like you know, what I'm saying I, I thought about it, but then um, like uh, Ray and Ghost came out with the only built for Cuban Link shit. And at that time, I didn't want to be a biter, so it was like, I didn't want to do that. I'm saying, but then I'm like, you know, my man, you know, JQ was the one who, who at me. I was like, yo, you, you, you Cuban, man. What are you told about? Hmm. You, you really shine. You, and so, you know, you got your man amping you up, and it was like, you already had it in your head, and he, he pushed it overboard. I was like, you know what? That's it right there, Cuban link. Hmm. And it's fit, man. It's fit. Everything about it is real. You know what I'm saying? Everything about it. You don't. Well, is there anything? And I'm going to keep looking at one. Is there anything you have to say before we exit out? Oh, I just want to let y'all know, man. You know, uh, you got to, uh, you have to uh, check out Cuban Link right now, man. I feel good about myself. I feel good about life. I feel good about anything. So, mm-hmm. you know, I want to congratulate anything that I've been through as far as like my past and everything. I don't see it as a, never as a crutch, never as a, as something that, you know, I regret. You know, we all go through life and, and we live it and we only uh, lucky enough to live as far as we lived. And then when you look back, 
as as long as you knew that that was the path that you had to take to become somebody greater later on is the only message I want to give you. So, uh, yeah, to the kids, the upcoming rapper, rappers and artists, yeah, keep your eyes open. You know, your friends are not usually your friends when they get involved in this music, so get your business right. Separate your business from your, from, from, from your, you know, from your friends when it comes to it. Make sure you, you know, you have people around you that that, that care about you, and not something that they want about you. So, um, and and just you know, create your own shit with real reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, be yourself. Don't fake it off for the camera. You know, those are the type of artists I love. You know what I'm saying? So, and uh, you can catch me in uh, Cherry Red 150. <laughs> 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 no, but you can catch me in Cuban Link uh, CLK uh, on my IG. Catch me in Felix Cuban Link Delgado on Facebook. Uh, I just dropped a new joint called uh, on my New York shit. I got a lot of joints coming. I'm gonna drop you know a different joint every month. So yeah, you know, gotta get yeah used to me, especially this generation. Right. And I'm just gonna give you a little part of my history, my little flavor was what Cuban got as far as like uh, what I think hip hop is. So I hope y'all enjoy it. And uh, new album is gonna be called Missing Link. Uh, be prepared, and um, it, it comes with a free. Uh, Beard kit come from Queen Flip. You know, you, you can, all you gotta do is just uh, download the the link and you get a. Uh, <laughs> my brother, number. even though I don't know this nigga, like that personally was good, like that, yeah, I feel like you know this. It, it just, yeah, just like you know, y'all stay in my in, in my phone, man. I go to sleep to y'all fuck around with, and, and I fall asleep and y'all niggas still be on with it. You know, flip the script part two hundred and nineteen. <laughs> so you know, I, I seen all y'all joints, man, and uh, like I said, man, I'm proud of y'all. I seen um, you know, I remember him when he had no beard. He was chasing, he was, he was snatching pizzas from 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 dudes making me gay. I wrestling with fat bitches on the boulevard. He cool, man. Oh, <laughs> man, what's, what's wrong with you, man? He cool, uh, man. G. Yeah, he cool, man. Hey, yo, G. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this guy is, that that was that wasn't good, but the the you album. Slipped it in. He cool. I I, I didn't expect it. You know, it, man. I, I was waiting because I was so just in tune with the story and everything. It was just a good solid show, but that that ending was just great. You know, he 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 closed out nice. He had the he pulled the album coming soon. And then he threw in the, the whole. That was they called me over God. They called me. Okay. Nah, we, we we just doing what we do out here. That's the thing too, man. You have the freedom to do everything. I feel comfortable here. Thank you for making me comfortable. Thank you for even thinking of Cuban Link after all these years, man. You know what I'm saying? So I think I thank you for that Bruce Lee picture up there. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here. Please just sit down until we finish the rev out. <laughs> man, um got Gio Yo, shout out, man. Another dope episode, oh, man. Deep, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, Real quick, shout shout out to um shout shout out to the uglies, man. You know what I'm saying? But uh the t shirt and all that. My man, my man Bosco and the whole squad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the uglies. That's how you put this together nice. Thank you. I try to do what I can. Shout out to BK uh V N Y C on a hat too one time. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you. Um, each and every Friday, Fishbowl Fridays in Queens, man. We had Tipsy Tomato. Make sure y'all pop out, have a good time. It's a good vibe in there. You know what I'm saying? We did the first Friday last week. You know, had a nice little crowd in there. It was good. It was a good time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to the boy Cuban Link. You know what I'm saying? Coming out. Appreciate it. Round of applause, my man, one time. Coming to the platform. What do you think about this interview, bro? With all the stuff that happened, man. It's, it's, it's great. I think, it's, you know, it, 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 it was still dope, man. You know, I, I love hearing these type of stories, man. You know, it's, you know, you, you get the you get the firsthand insight on the artists and, 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 the, and the, um, the stories and the history. So, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student of the game still, you know what I'm saying? Being a DJ and a hip hop, you know, fan. So, you know, I appreciate it. You know, and I, I, I worked with him before a couple of times. I, I did a few events actually where he, he hosted, yeah. showcased and stuff yeah. like that. Yep. So, you know, now I get to really sit and talk to him and, and get the inside school. So, you know, it was dope. Yeah, that's it. It was dope man. And I don't want nobody to take it like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you know, you, the beautiful thing about life is that it's always two sides to a story. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I get to determine that. You know what I'm saying? As far as that, if you want to determine that. But th this that we talked about, this right here, it never came out from anywhere with, from a bad side or animosity. It's something no, that, I didn't feel that. Yeah, it's I something that, that those are, those, these, these are events that really happened that, um, you know, that you can't change or sugarcoat. So no, I, I, that's I think, why. I think how you told the stories, I, I didn't feel no kind of. You know, I didn't feel no kind of bad blood or any kind of malice. No. I, I, I didn't feel it either. I, I didn't, so, not at all. But let me ask you a question. How I don't want people, you know, because I've been painted with that brush that, like, you know, Cuban always hate and Cuban yeah, always yeah, this yeah. and he always use it. And I'm like, I, I tell the truth and I get prosecuted. So it's like, yo, it's crazy. How do you feel about the interview? I feel great, man. I feel great. I feel Even good. I feel camera. relaxed, a bit chilling. Even with the camera shutting off, you feel good. 
<laughs> I told you it was going to happen. <laughs> you did. But overall, how you feel That's for real? Crazy. I feel dope, my nigga. I feel dope. So you you dope. It continue? You think it'll be on a continuous journey of this being a classic? You know, we had you got you to open up? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. This is this is this 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 is I mean, this is a good start, but it's still in the past. Like yeah. we we gotta definitely do it again when when we get to the to the music part of things and uh and stories. Or we can extend it. Cause you, if you go deep if, it, like I said, it depends on what you ask me. That's weird, man. Cause cause you it's like this now, man. It's like you, you tell me a place, yo, I heard that the, word, I'll tell you a story. It's not like I can remember on my own anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like God damn, I've been through so much shit. But if you tell me, what are you? And I always got to be negative. It could be just you know some funny shit or whatever. But I'll tell you, nigga, getting old, man. See now, nigga's old, man. I can't remember everything no more. You sent us two records. You know, yeah. we, can't, we can't really play records. Um, you know. It's all right. You do whatever you do. Give yeah. them to your friends. But 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 give it to the top DJ, you know, and tell them, yo, do that shit for Q. Spread the love, baby. And you're dropping the album? Do you plan to drop an album? Or you just, I'm gonna keep dropping you, singles until, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, gotta let the people, again, like. Who you work with now, Cuban? Myself, baby, CLK Entertainment. Got my own company and doing my own thing, just like y'all doing, you know what I'm saying? Don't watch, don't watch us. Don't watch us. Don't watch us. Gotta watch y'all, man. They gotta watch. I appreciate watch. it. Listen, I hope you watch her. this. I watch y'all. Yo, this is Queen's Flip. Dope, dope interview, classic. Yes. In my opinion, a lot of things happen, but classic. <laughs> no, things that happened were classic. No, you didn't tell them about the spirits, man. No Let them know, man. There's no spirits. After the story about you in the beginning was it's dope. A nice Halloween joint too. Ooh. Mm. This shit Halloween. turned off, man. That shit got me tight though. I ain't gonna lie, that shit brought me the wrong. I don't know what the fuck going on. I told but you. we are gonna figure it out, man. It's good energy, man. It's good energy. Don't ever no, take this back. no, no, no. <laughs> no. Lock your doors. <laughs> Close your windows. You'd have seen the fuck you. Oh yeah, I forgot. Finish, finish what you saying. What? Throw some buckets out the window? What you say? <laughs> no, you said. You said Lock your doors. Close the windows. Lock your doors. Close your windows. Close your blinds. He said the culo. Open your blinds. And if you see a nigga you like open blinds. If you see a nigga like Cuban Link on your lawn, don't be afraid to use a firearm. I'm from Queens. <laughs>